One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration, and if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be. A good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a Who's that? It's Holy Week. Oh. Huh? Get some holy water for her. She's thirsty. Actually, we do have holy water. Throw some on her. <laughs> Say hey, Sarah. If you're if you have a Filipino that's Catholic, freaky. that's freaky. Odds are they'll have a holy water in in their hand in the house. And if you're Scientologist, you got twenty. <laughs> Hundred Scientologists are not. Four. I'll take a whole crap load of 20. Thank you very much. Right? <laughs> Me and my dog, Bunny. It's funny. I actually left um, the same size holy water in the U.S. when we flew over here. But I didn't realize I sent uh, holy water in the in the like, buying box. So that's what that is. So why? Okay. It's kind of funny. Um, who's that? Say something. This is a guess. Is Easter Easter Bunny? Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny. All right, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a damn good show. It's gonna be a damn good show. All right, guys. So we found an oldie but goodie of the Rafi Tufel show of a woman that was just two time and everything, two times empty in the bank account, and the guy lost the farm literally. Monkey, be good. By the way, we went back to the name Monkey after we thought about it, Sarah, because we, we initially called her Monkey for the first week or two, and she doesn't do real well with the name Chloe. So I think she responds to Monkey, monkey better. Really well. yeah. So we stick with the Monkey. We called her Monkey anyways. We always give the animals usually two names, but yeah, so it's back to Monkey again. But um, yeah, so the guy literally lost the farm, and it's really sad and i haven't seen most of this huh no remember that was somebody in columbia oh, wrong okay. the wrong. woman has the their last name how's that possible it looks exactly like it, it did but it's not okay okay, from okay. Bogota. yeah it, it, there was some Bog bogota that's that's a real place are you serious right now it's a joke it's kind of like garfield always sends normal to abu dhabi Speaking of normal, but anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have an interesting show for you guys today. Hey, Bill and I, Puma Stab, Brian, Tim Husk, Michael Johnson is in the house. Um, Pablo Chino was in the house first. Chicano, Chicano. Oh, um, she likes the number. Sure, that's two. not Chis Chisano. No, it's Chicano. Pablo Maybe Chicano he's from Bogota. Bogota. Boba, uh, Boba, Boba each, each set probably contains two kids. There you go. <laughs> hey, sir, how hey, you call, doing? Call Hello, Heidi and George. Babe, call, call Mango. Or call, never mind. Well, Mango and her are starting to. Hey, Racer X. Hi, Heidi and George in the house. Hi, peeps. <laughs> and by the way, you guys might be able two to. Two husbands. Them. Well, technically, yes, I guess. Um, yes, yes. Hi, this is Dave. Happy Holy Week out there. Yes, well, here's the thing. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Philippine Custom, Holy Week, they have these nonstop um, vigil slash prayer for 24 hours for one week. Nonstop, like nonstop, doesn't end. Um, in fact, it's so, this year it's somewhat louder than last year 
because now I can hear clearly the next barangay over. Um, but anyway, but like I said, the interesting thing they is up their speakers. This no, they year. did. I think it's they. It's twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah. twenty four. I think they update their speakers so they can drown out the next barangay over. But and sometimes you can hear both. I yes. No. Yeah, I, no. You can hear them both. Yeah. yeah. So it's but. The, it, like I said, the interesting thing is usually this is done by the el the village elders. Um, you know, village. I use village loosely here. The village elders and they do the prayers nonstop, nonstop for twenty four seven seven for seven for a whole week. Actually, they start before the Holy Week. Before the Holy Week, actually. Well, listen, um, me and my Scientologist monkey here. So we're we're just gonna go around and hand out hundred hundred dollar bills. Okay. Yeah, you do that. So <laughs> yeah, from your wallet. The difference is here, the pabasa, as they say, which means the reading. Um it's done by the village kids, which is unusual even for me. Well, I'm like, I've never seen nor heard of this before until we moved in this area and they have kids reading it, and it's kind of warm in this house. Um, unorthodox, I guess you would, just, you would call it. Tim Huss, good morning and good evening to you all. Brian Thompson, good Kumasa, hi, George. We are doing good. Thank you for asking. Hey, Bill from Toledo City, Cebu. Bill and Evan in Toledo City, Cebu. <laughs> Oh, here you go. Michael Jones says, oh. George, speaking of the culture here, I keep seeing what looks like bay leaf in the corners of the home. What is that? Wait. Are you talking about the palaspas? Or are you talking about literally the laurel leaves they put in a cup? Maybe it's something else besides. Are you talking about the big things they nail on the front of the house? Yeah, there's, the doors? there are several things that they do here. Right, so it's so. kind of. Um, but right now, during Holy Week, they do have um, what they call palaspas. Palaspas basically. And it might be sage. It translates to whip, but that's not what it really is. Um, palaspas is usually like um, something made out of coconut, and then they weave it. It doesn't look like a coconut leaf anymore. And then, or or a fern, and then they those they put in corners of the house too. But like I said, I'm not quite sure. So fast. Actually, that kind of works. Wow. Well, Actually, you know, oh, you know what? I haven't been out to to see the palace bus yet. I might see them today. I might. You really think last year's was still here, babe? We have, no, the plus plus is gone. Up. Yeah, I know. No, uh, well, yeah, I guess I did look over there, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, your glasses. Right? That's that's where the yeah. Don't go blind with them. That's hey, where RGD. The, that's where the plus plus was. Yeah. So yeah, it's just reflex. I wasn't even thinking when I did it. Um, RGD. Good morning, Heidi and George. Hey, oh, Philippine hey. Express Prepper. Good morning, all. Yeah, Holy Week. We have several parades happening that I know of scheduled, and we'll try to take some bids. Hey, AJ, Aloha, Heidi, and George. They have a bunch going on, but especially here in the Angel City area and the Mabalaka City area, they're walking all over the crosses. More, they don't really do that. They do that. They don't do that out in the provinces, do they, during this? Yes, uh, they, do. they do. Oh, do they? They do, but only certain ones. I mean, obviously, there's certain places in Mindanao they'll, they won't do this because it's a Catholic thing. Um, Page Prepper, the tour buses here, everywhere here in Boras, as it was, as it has a very old church, and everyone is visiting. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to travel right now. A lot of people, like I remember last year, I seen Roger and Isme. Um, some of you are familiar with Roger and Isme, the Filipino couple. Um, they traveled or something. They sat around for eight, nine hours just waiting to leave on a bus. And all kinds of stuff happened with them. And then I think one night they couldn't even get their bus and they had to stay in town. And this will happen sometimes when you travel in the Philippines. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, remember Murphy's Law. It applies here more than anywhere else. Or rather more in most other countries, rather. 
Um, Brands World, good morning, Heidi and George. Another beautiful day in Badok. Badok, Badok, <laughs> Badok, Badok. George is looking fabulous. <laughs> I guess he's talking about the glasses. <laughs> yeah. So we do have an interesting thing um, for you today. Um, it's about a and sorry Anne. All it's right. So Anne. most of this I haven't seen. George broke the video down, but I do know the basics because I watched some of the first part. So a lot of this I'll be reacting to raw. Um, but the basis that I took on the notes, and I did take notes for this guys. Um, the gentleman is an Australian. His name is Clinton. And he has a wife they met 12 years ago. They met online. Um, he used to come here to the Philippines, big humanitarian. Um, he ended up getting married to Marcelita. Yes. Okay, but she did keep her maiden name, which they do normally. But Noriega. for some reason, for some reason, okay, she really kept that last name. So it looks like um, she's from Tondo, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. And from there, the guy lost his shirt, literally everything. And so there are things that will come up in this. And to me, it's one of the bigger scams that I've seen because a lot of people don't lose this much. A lot of the guys hold on to things, but this guy literally lost his home in Australia. So over this, I lost my farm and know. then he lost his home here. So he not only lost one home, but he lost his second home here. So, and in the end, she'll play a blame game. So I'm giving you a hint that there'll be a blame game and everything else. And this gets to be pretty, pretty, pretty raunchy. Yeah. Raunchy, raunchy. I, I lost my farm for you. You didn't lose no farm. Yeah, it was an ant farm. I miss Mighty Mike. <laughs> you didn't lose no ant farm. Stop your whimpering, boy. <laughs> Give the other expats something to talk about. Oh, my God. <laughs> that old American woman, man, just doesn't want to give him a chance. That's a good band, you know. <laughs> you know what it's like living with him is about as much as it's living with me. Alien and farm. Hey, Thumbs up. Da -da 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 exactly. All right. Here we go, guys. All right, guys. And we'll answer um like questions after. So talk amongst yourself. If you guys aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe and share this. Hello to everybody on Facebook. Also, thank you guys. We have officially hit 7,000 subscribers, organically grown. Okay. Meaning that we haven't bought any numbers. Hey, we don't. Hey do any of that extra stuff on any of our views and we've had the channel now for a couple years so everything is you know we're very happy seven thousand subscribers guys so <laughs> michael jensen says i laugh at your video about mom not giving an easter basket <laughs> oh yeah i posted that one and, and we just posted the one um like if you guys will check out our other channel we have waggle and fluff that's our pet channel and then the other channel is Island Reboot. <laughs> I told George today, I'm thinking about renaming it. What I say to Heidi and Monkey Philippines or something, or right. Heidi and what do we say? Heidi and Mutt or something. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi like, and it reminds Mutt me of Express. Mutt and Jeff. Jeff. Right. Mutt Heidi Jeff. Mutt Express. So, Open the expat purpose says, Congratulations Ooh. on the 7,000. Ted Dankins. Hey, Ted, how you doing? Ted says, Congratulations. Every day is an adventure with George. You know what? We could actually, we could actually name it. We we had to do the Heidi and Monkey uh, journey or something, or Heidi and you know everybody's doing journey or adventure on the end of their name. No, that's not a joke. That's real. Maybe we should. Maybe we should just call it Heidi's Journey Philippines. We should call it Philippine Antics Journey. No, how about this call? George is going to get some journey. <laughs> George might get some today, Journey. Right. That's not true. You... There, there, it's called a pipe dream. I could be Mario for all I care. But anyway. Uh... Looks looks like a pipe cleaner. Oh, thank you so much, Looks Michael like a Johnson. pipe cleaner Congrats to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael thank Johnson. You. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Mango's eating the string. 
Jesus. Never, never a dull day. Hey, 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 hey. I know. Hey, I don't know where. Eat that. There we go. The cat was eating this random string. And that'll help quite a bit. We, Actually, we're getting. Oh, gross. On... Oh, my God. It's... Don't put it on me because it's wet, like a wet nose. <laughs> it's sticky. Stop, it's gross. It's nasty. It's not even coming. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of it. See, it's still on me. Oh, my gosh. Oh my god. Um monkey the the dog puppy got it from one probably oh. from her pajamas. Oh, she got it off the teddy bear on that, but the cat was chewing the string and everything. Yeah. Get that wet noodle off me. I had it on me last night. She was RGD watch from the beginning. Congratulations on 7K. Great content. Thank you so much. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Lay that wet noodle on me. I don't want no whips and chains. Yeah. Put your loving on me, baby. Put your loving on me. Is that a tribute to Snoop? I mean, to Puff Daddy? I ain't vanilla, baby. I am vanilla. You are? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, no, guys. it's not. It's something off an old song back in the day. No, it, it, that, was a, that was a dig, just so you guys know. Anyway. anyway. See, uh, Mrs. Marcelita Barker, the wife of Mr. Barker. Man. First things first, regarding yeah. the cheating. We decided to to get a condo, rent to own. Yep. Okay. Yes. Always bounce check like that. No. What do you mean always bounce check? Um. Oh, I, I thought you meant. No, I'm okay. Oh, okay, okay. No. So he issued bounce check, Mr. Mine. Parker. Hmm. Mine. Okay. So why did you issue bounce check? I know because. His obligation to pay the rent to own, mm -hmm. and then we understand because that time our life is uh, very down. Him, uh, so that means he wasn't giving enough money to, to uh, the, pay the, for the uh, yeah, rent that to time, own. That's why, yeah, that time. Okay, that's why. It's, yeah. yeah, I I understand him that time because uh, you weren't you were asking, working at that time. You weren't working. No, not no. You because were asking I was, seventy, eighty thousand pesos a month to live. Yeah, I have. I have a. I seventy thousand a month. Seventy to eighty, yeah. Yeah. No, the condo. I have here the receipt and the billing. The H how much is the uh, mortgage for the condo? It's monthly. <laughs> so basically, hold on. Can I ask? Is that the entire clip? Looks no, like no, no, the no, clip that, is out of that. That's a preview. Um. So basically, the thing is, is, hold on. All right. So this is the actual wife. That's Marcelita. And so first he came on the show and then his wife ended up joining. We're getting some of those clips. Wait. Yeah, I know. Did you grab the wrong one or? No. I don't have nothing to say. I, I, I haven't seen everything to react to it. Oh. <laughs> oh, the puppy's like crying. I know. So we have him crying or her crying, and then we have the prayers out there. And did you upload that to the cloud? No, I don't have to. I have the actual drive. That's so faster than anything. Well, eighty thousand. Michael Johnson said eighty thousand per month isn't cheap. That's how much he actually sent her per month. All right, so that was an actual monthly. And it's a condo, mind you. I mean, the issue you have here again is the backdrop is 
he did flew down here and he did actually meet her. He um he's actually um some one of those uh, missionary type um individuals. And remember, I always told you that when you're a missionary type, you're a target for a lot of reasons. One again, when when you're the missionary type, meaning if you're the kind of ones that give to charity a lot and literally physically is active out doing giving the stuff away, um, there's a misconception that people will see you personally as the one with money. And a lot of people don't realize that even though, yes, some of these charity workers are actually active and do give money, it's not necessarily mean that's actually all them. You guys know what I'm talking about. Usually there's somebody else backing them up, that kind of deal. And he's a charity worker that worked in Tondo. Um, he's from Australia, right here, arrived in Tondo and started doing charity work in Tondo. And that's how he met her. Then we're all the same. No, I know. But I thought you were... Australian, sinimot ng misis niyang pinay at pinagpalit sa isang tambay. That, that basically translates to, this is an expat who got re replaced by an unemployed individual. Tambay means, tambay is actually not... It's not true Filipino. What I'm what I'm saying is, remember the problem is in today's vernacular. Most of um, today's vernacular again is not the real language. Um, like tambay is actually short for standby, which means somebody standing by. So tambay, that's where it came from, and so tambay means somebody just standing around doing nothing, and that's what tambay means, meaning standing around doing nothing, unemployed. Nasa studio din po natin si Clinton Barker. Oh, my po nose siyang is Australian. bleeding. Uh, I have to wipe my nose first Nakabahan before it's bleed. And so now, that's the old adage. You'll, you guys will hear this. Um, in fact, I'm, have you heard this in real life? I think you should have. No. Um, when they say nosebleed, it means um, it's kind of embarrassing. Not, not to you, but to them. Like, because they're not used to speaking English. Which, um, I guess that's Rafi's joke that you know he has to like wipe off his nosebleed because he has to speak English. Si Rafi Noriega, kapatid ng nirereklamo at si Lorna Gelogo, tita ng nirereklamo na si Marcelita Noriega. Nirereklamo niya ang kanyang pinay girlfriend dahil sa panlolok ng ginawa nito sa kanya. Oh, okay, Mr. Clinton, how are you, sir? Okay, so what she said was, this is Marcelita. We have a complainant here that she scammed them out of a lot of money. And that's where what she said. Um, yeah, not bad. Do you speak Tagalog? Uh, no, only a few words. Uh -huh. Just to left and right. So, Mr. Barker, what can we do for you, sir? Um, I've just sort of come for a bit of a v advice on the situation that I have at the moment. Okay. Um, uh, I have a lot of uh, Filipino friends in Australia, okay. and they all think very highly of you, and they said to come and talk to you. Thank so, you, sir. What's your girlfriend's name? I know, she's my wife. She's your wife? She's been doing it for 12 years. But her last name is Noriega. Yeah, no, it's actually Barker. Noriega Barker. Barker. It's a bit of a story. Do you want me to start at the beginning? Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, about 12 years ago, I met her online. Okay. And I was coming to the Philippines and giving out food and things like that, doing a bit of charity work. And um, she, uh, she's from Tondo, and she's just ended up a wonderful woman. So we got married. About three years later, when uh, I went to get the visa to bring her to Australia, um, her, she was still married to her ex. So we paid a lawyer to um, annul her marriage, like okay. you do here. All right. But the lawyer may well be tend to be a fake Muslim and all sorts of things and got it done anyway. Okay. Um, and then that was sort of it. I came over four times a year. We've got three children. 
Mm-hmm. Um, one's a stepdaughter. Okay. And uh, it was just, I just waited for years and years and years for her to come to Australia. And there's always the excuse. Her father was very sick, so I sort of fig- figured she wanted to wait till then. So she never went to Australia? Never. And then about four years ago, she told me, I'm coming to Australia in a couple of months. Don't come here. Wait and just save the money. So I did. And this has been going on for about four and a half, five years now. And then about three months ago, I decided just to make a surprise visit. And um, I turned up at the at my condo that we bought. She wasn't there and the condo had been sold. And okay. the condominium place can't tell me how, why or where. No one will tell me nothing. What did you find out about uh, your wife? Uh, I found out that she um, had a man and three babies. Oh, man. They'd been living in the condo two years ago. They sold it. Um, They've got a shop in, in Dragon 8 and all that sort of stuff. But but do you have baby with her? I do, yeah. Two, Two and her stepdaughter. So three children. But she also has another three babies with this guy. And um, I've been sending money constantly, paying for the stock in their shop, which is everything's in his name. And she said yes. And she contacted me and she said, I've moved away from him. Uh, my shop's gone. Everything's gone. They've taken my kids and I felt much pity for her, you know. Mm. And she says, I'll try and pay the money back. And I said, well, it's, it, it adds up to like nearly 10 million pesos. So it's nearly, and it'd be impossible for her to pay back. But it's I said, I'll try and work a deal out, you know. And then um, she told me she was in a province with a food cart with a friend and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And then yesterday I found out that uh, she still has the shop. She's still with the man and they're both there living off my money and happily. And so you bought a shop? What kind of shop is this? Uh, it's uh, like souvenirs and that. I just, I just been giving her money for it and, you know, for the stock of the shop. I couldn't work out why this shop that I'm sending money to never made any money. Okay, including the condo, how much money you have given her? The last four years, uh, around $88,000, plus she got okay. 500000 from the condo. Now, the problem I have here, it's not so much as the what he's saying it's the situation is remember he's talking about dollars we're not talking about you know philippine pesos we're talking about dollars here which is somewhat hey, Bruce. somewhat like an absurd or obscene amount to send to somebody now i understand that he did he did fly here and he did marry her i get that however well let's let the story unfold well also on top of this remember he's lost other assets the money of flying and and uh, he's going to tell you how many times he's coming so don't forget about the flights to be with her the back and forth um and he also is somebody already commented and we let the cat out of the bag early he also sends her about eighty thousand pesos a month for years so it really does actually i think it falls somewhere between 13 and 15 million pesos so a couple hundred thousand us or australian dollars Five hundred thousand pesos when On she top sold of the, the con- 88,000 yeah, australian dollars when she sold the condo how much is that in peso converted oh, uh, that's three and a half million or something like that maybe more that's a lot of money but i paid three and a half million off the condo as well and that's now for sale for 5 million pesos. Okay. So I lost that as well. Do you know where she is right now? <laughs> I thought she was in a province, but yesterday I confronted her. I went to her shop and found out she still owned the shop, still had the shop. They were still together. And I confronted her and she just cried. And she's basically been begging me not to put her in jail since then. So what do you want us to do now? Put her in jail? Uh, to be honest, I didn't at the start because I, f- I feel really bad. But the point is with what she has done, it, is, it, it really is beyond. Mm. Okay. So... Nag-usap pa kayo ng sister mo, si Marcelita? Pinag-usapan na ba? When was the last time? Now, when they said put her in jail. That is weird. Um, it's not so much as, I guess, the scam part. They're, they're kind of like what I'm getting at illegally on the scam part is you're supposed to pay restitution or pay the money back and if you can't do that then they put you in jail and that's what they're talking about also be aware too that in philippine law if you get a loan and you can't pay it back it's the same thing you go to jail if you can't pay the loan back so just so you guys know again there is no i mean it's not like the philippines lacks on 
scammers or anything like that. No, they do have laws in place that if they do you do you wrong, they will go after you. So this is in place. But however, again, the the trick here or the problem is is if for for instance, let's say um Tom in the US is sending money to Maria in the Philippines and he got scammed that way. Tom can't do anything about it by Philippine law unless he flies to the Philippines and files a case against Maria. That's how it works. So that's the the kind of like the catch twenty two kind of deal. Like if you got scammed while you're in the US and you you can still go after the girl. You just have to fly to the Philippines to do it. I'm you talk to her. Kapun. So ano pong napag-usapan niyo? Ang, po, ang gusto niya mangyari, mag-usap-usap daw kami. Ang problema, hindi naman siya umaharap. Okay. okay. And she's got to admit guilt too. We, we've discussed that before. Right. In other words, if she says it was a gift all the way through and didn't admit to any guilt, because we've seen that on other shows, right. then it'd be harder to prosecute. Now, this gentleman right here in the red shirt is actually the Marcelita's brother. And he's on the side of the expat, put it that way. Now, he just said that, according to him, his sister just wants to talk it over, meaning she doesn't want to get in trouble. Let's talk it over, you know what I'm saying? And then, but he says, however, the problem is she wants to talk it over, but she doesn't want to meet with us. So it's kind of like a... Like a, you know, I, one of those, I guess she's just trying to push things aside kind of deal. Yeah. So the sister wants to talk to them, the family. The problem is she doesn't want to face them mm. or have a face-to-face -face conversation. No. Why is that? Bakit sa? So hindi natuloy. May schedule sa pag-uusap. Oh, hindi po natuloy kasi nga parang ang daming alibay. Na... Sino tong lalaki? A batchmate niya po sa high school. You know the guy? Former schoolmate. Yes. Um, that would be his, her high school sweetheart, technically. The father of, I would say, at least two children. Because he, they, that household on that side has three. But when he met, so you think all three belong to him? According to the Australian guy. All three belong to According this guy. According to the Australian guy. Okay. That, that's, I mean, it, it's kind of confusing. I mean, they didn't go deep into the kids, but according to the Israel guy, three kids, that's what he said. I've heard that, yeah. Sinabi niyo sa kanya, sir, na mali yung ginagawa niya, na nakakaya, kaya kayo sumama dito kay Mr. Barker. Sinabi na, sinabi naman na po namin yun, eh. Ang problema, ayaw niyang, ayaw niyang kami kapakinggan. He says, Rafi says, well, did you guys tell her that this is an it's embarrassing what she's doing and it's not right and the brother says we did tell her that but she doesn't want to listen she doesn't want to listen to them no i mean i offered her a few chances even after i found out i still offered chances i mean the thing is i understand that someone falls out of love with somebody and that's not a problem if you well, come so, and excuse me so where were you married here in a, the in here right? yeah yeah in the philippines so you're still married with her so I well she tells me I'm not she tells me see when I paid the lawyer to annul her first marriage she told me that was all done but when I come to her recently and I said look you've been committing adultery you you're going to get a jail she said well and regardless all, even if the annulment <laughs> didn't push through okay um I want to make a statement on this like really confuses me and I'm surprised Rafi didn't take the time to talk about this but Somehow, some way, she is actually married to the other guy. I'm, I, I'm even unclear to the end of this whether it was ever annulled. But according to the end, it's never been annulled, correct? correct. So she is still somehow married to, to both people. men. To two people. Okay, I want to let you guys know that here in Angel City, two times during three years, we attempted to get married in the Philippines. We're already married in the U.S. for years, okay? But we wanted a certificate here to add to the immigration. Remember, we went through this back and forth thing. 
So in order to do that, George had to get a legal clearance. So my guess is, is maybe either A, she presented a fake one, which can be done. Okay, people can produce them. Or the local office, I believe, small enough, I believe just didn't the ask local for office it. didn't ask for it. And so a lot just, of them do because this or was don't, this was they got married at this point probably 12, 15 years ago. So yes, Michael, yes, I'm confused how she can marry twice. Yes, again, it's possible no, if the local office 12 didn't to 15 years didn't ago bother to double they check met. their credentials. And that's what it sounds like because remember, every office is different because. Already this year, we have several expat friends. They didn't even ask half the paperwork. When I got to Angel City, same office, they asked me for everything and would not accept the seal that was on our paperwork. Okay, so we had to send it back to the U.S. to have it apostyled differently before they would even accept it. So one person, they didn't even ask for that stuff. The next person, they can ask for everything. So somehow I'm, I'm believing that because... It's just the way that it actually works here. So, yeah, two marriages, yeah. Yes, so she is married to both men. And he allegedly paid somebody to annul, which means she got the money for that too. Like I said, I don't think the amount 10 is right because remember, he was sending her about 15,000 US and it had to be for almost 12 years, except for the times that he was actually here and times that he'll claim later he was broke. So right. Oh, and guys, just so you guys know, um, when I s translate the the Filipino part, because Rafi is kind of like a bad subtitle. Um, if you want, if you understand the other language in subtitled movies, that's not for the most part. When the actor says the lines, that's not what they said, but somehow the subtitle that's what it says, and kind of like. Rafi again, like when I translate it, it's not the same what he says, or it's similar but not the same. And just so you guys know, because Rafi, when he translates for the foreigner, for some strange reason, he doesn't translate all the way. He only translates a smidgen of what he said. So just so you guys know, that's why his answers are very short. If you guys pay attention, versus what I say. Yeah, she is still liable. Yeah, because or, or I didn't bigamy. know. She Be said that she annulled my marriage at the same time. Right. So do you have the marriage certificate with you? Uh, it's just outside. Okay. And uh, also the certificate of no impediment as well. I did it all properly. Right. As far as Philippine law is concerned, you both are still married yeah. to each other. Okay. So she's not supposed to be living together with anybody. And having three babies. Guy. You know, every year she's been sick and very sick, and I've sent money to help out when she's been sick. Okay. That is a red flag. She says, he says every year she's sick. She's always sick. Uh -huh. And the most common thing is I'm sick. My mom's sick. My dad's sick. My sister's sick. My cousin's sick. Send money. Those are your red flags. And then also then they start killing off their family. Not literally, but figuratively they'll say, Oh, you know, this died. Oh, this died. Oh, this died. No, oh, I need money. But this one did it over time. This, to me, it was is one of the biggest scams I've seen. And on top of that, she uses how much he loves her in this manner. And then later, she just becomes totally toxic. So stick around because she'll turn totally toxic and try to pick at little things that he's done. And as a woman, I'm like, is she really doing the blame game right now to get out of the money that she that she's actually taken? And here's the problem. A lot of times Rafi will say to the women, hey, pay it back, pay it back or make arrangements. I don't care if it's one million pesos. They'll never be able to repay that here. I'm sorry. Even even I at this point could not as an expat with with a halfway decent you know retirement right now cannot repay back that kind of money. That's a, what is that, 20,000 US or something? No, we don't have that kind of savings to repay something like that. So a working Filipina with a guy that doesn't work at all with her and three children, and it just would be an impossible, so. Right. It would be um, impossible. Brian, um, I think he's a bit of an innocent type. It's more of the naive type. It, it, the thing is with nice people is, 
They only see the niceness in others. Um, mm -hmm. And this guy is kind of like that business guy that got taken to the previous one we did a couple lives back. This guy was also a sheriff in Australia, and he also was a detective. He, so he's got like a background, and he says he didn't even see it coming. And I told George, I feel that these guys, you'll, you'll hear others say that it was about the Punani or something every time. And I think it's that, and they're in love. I think they're like the women. They're in, in the ideal of being in love. And I think a lot of these guys, and I believe this guy was married once to an Australian woman. So I think he's just, you know, he was looking forward to moving on and in yeah. love with, and that's what is very sad. So PH prepper detective. I don't see it. Well, here's the thing about that is the moment you stick your wick in magic banana, you're done for just saying. That's what happened to George several times. Magic. What is it? Did and now say? I realize that I was they don't make a blanket big enough to cover your trunk. Oh, so how many kids do you have in, in the United States? One in every state. That's a true story. Yep. Everywhere I land where the plane goes. True story. No, I'm joking. I was paying to help her have babies so to another man. Yeah, we got that AJ on. It's just the uh kite na hindi tayo nagkaron ng banding. Pero pinakita mo pa rin na todo support pa rin yung ginawa mo sa kapatid ko kahit na niloko ka pa rin niya. Pero nandito ako hindi para siraan siya, hindi para makuha mo yung ustisya na para sa'yo. Okay. He says, we haven't really bonded. And you supported my sister even though all she did was scam you, basically. And I'm not here to dirty the name of my sister, but I'm here to help you find justice. That's what he said. Okay, he said he's here not to say bad things about her. <laughs> See, that's it. That's that's Robin's translation. <laughs> it's weird. It's really short and it's not the whole thing. But anyway. He's here because... He wants you to get justice. Yeah. Although you guys didn't spend much time together, but he knows pretty much the kind of guy you are. They're my family. See, kung pera lang pinag-usapan dito, walang problema eh. Pero yung lokohin ka na, ng may ibang lalaki, yun ang pinakamasakit talaga sa akin. What is that? Oh. Okay, so money is not the issue here, which is kind of, to me, it's odd for him to say that. I guess he's not, he, I mean, he's the brother. He's not involved in the relationship. So I don't think he realizes how much money is involved. But he says, money's not the issue. The real issue is that she's cheating on him. And that's what he says. But remember, the, the, the brother is not involved on any manner whatsoever. He's just basically trying to um, be a character witness for both, if that makes any sense. Dahil di naman kami pinalaki ng magulang namin nag maloko ng tao eh. Ikaw nagawa niya na lang dahil nang lalaki siya. Says, our parents didn't raise us to be bad people. And our parents didn't raise us to be cheaters. He said you wasn't raised by her parents to be bad people. His father was the most wonderful man I'd ever met. He was absolutely amazing, his father. Salamat sa lahat. Na ginawa mo sa ate ko, kahit na kapalit eh, hindi maganda. Pero, yun lang gustong mangyari, mabigyan lang ng ustisya yung ginawa niya para sa'yo. He's very thankful for your kindness. Uh, and all he wants is for you to get justice. The justice that you deserve, sir. That's what he said. I, I appreciate it all. Yeah. I really do. He didn't expect that things will turn out to be this No, way. never, never. Yeah. I mean, I've trusted 100%. 
you know that's that's the weird thing is because in in my past job my, my specialty is finding out lies and things like that and you I just also a psychologist sir well I've, I've did a bit of criminal psychology and everything as well but all in part of the job you know is to know if mm. someone's lying when you're talking to them that right. and i never for a, a second thought that for her you know okay okay naman tita anong masasabi mo kay sir thank you for loving my niece and the children your honest person she's being emotional mm. you're a very nice guy as far as they're concerned yeah yeah well that's what they i mean like you. in australia if you you tell about tondo and place like that people say oh no 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 i went there at christmas i went around the streets caroling all those things everybody What's always wrong with tondo? treated me with love that's what i mean everybody is so wonderful <laughs> it's it's funny he says what's wrong with tondo no there's nothing wrong with tondo um now the about the tondo thing be aware that on the tondo thing tondo has always had a bad connotation to it. it's a bad area yada, yada 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 now again remember it's it's just a location okay it's don't prejudge people because they live in a certain location however Okay, Tondo is not all slums, but most of it is slums. Um, Tondo is rough. Okay, it's it's. They had lived a hell of a life on eighty thousand pesos. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, still yeah. Well, curious well, what she did with eighty thousand pesos, and of course, that's month, coming in the next clip. Yeah, eighty thousand pesos, yeah, guys. And... We're we're not even spending that and. I mean, that's a lot of money. No, it's a lot of money. Area. Yeah. Now, the Tondo thing again. Now, remember, I understand that he did pick her up from there. Okay. But don't mm -hmm. prejudge that everybody is like that from Tondo. Um, however, again, it's the probability. However, it's a different story. It's kind of like here when we were looking for a location to live in, I say stuff like, you don't want to live there. You know, that kind of stuff. You're an expat. You don't want to live there. Um, the reason being, again, now this will apply to you guys. Remember, what where a Filipino can live in may not necessarily be good for an expat. Okay? Again, I'm not trying to be prejudicial or anything because it's not me doing the thing, uh, doing the prejudice part. It's the other people you have to worry about. It's kind of like driving. If you're a good driver, you don't have to worry about your driving. You have to worry about other people's driving. Same thing when living in a different country. Don't worry about whether you're a good person or not. Worry about the ones you encounter. And same thing again now. Again, Tondo, again, has a bad connotation. Don't assume that everybody's bad there. However, the probability is higher. Again, that's all I'm saying. Same thing here in Angeles. There are certain areas where I would say, no, let's not go there. No, let's not live there because the probability is not good. It's the same thing in the U.S. It's kind of like, oh, let's go to Camden, New Jersey. They're like, anybody who knows Camden, they're like, oh, no, 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 don't go there. You know what I'm saying? But again, not everybody in Camden is bad, but the probability is higher. That's all I'm saying. Um now, actually, I'm looking for the the one in black. This one. Okay. Okay. Now, it says, after we spoke with Clinton, we noticed he was talking um, while he was talking to, um, I guess, Rafi. He says, idol. Um, while he was talking to Rafi, they, they talk to a tricycle driver was if that was a fact then when he was applying for australian uh paperwork to have him sent they wouldn't have found that she was married and you don't need an annulment from a muslim marriage so we thought the same too so she said th something about in muslims you know she brought the muslim thing up no yeah. there's still even if it was done under the table the australians wouldn't have found it and she wouldn't have needed an old, even if it was all not real and scammed him for the money. 
the marriage is still coming up that she's married to two people. So. Right. So Racer X knows what I'm talking about. Racer X has someone say Camden, New Jersey. <laughs> Police in every block. Right. Again, that's that's a good analogy of Tondo. Tondo again is one of those quote unquote bad areas. But again, don't don't prejudge everybody. Not everybody in Canada, New Jersey is bad. Hey, just facts. But the probability Joseph. of something bad happening is higher than most. Same thing in Tondo. Not everybody in from Tondo is bad, but the probability of something bad happening to somebody at nighttime, anyway. You know, in daytime it's somewhat okay in Tondo, but nighttime, forget it. Don't go out at night at Tondo. Um, Camden, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Um so basically, just so you guys know, this tricycle driver has nothing to do with the current topic. Um, he's just there in the studio waiting for his turn to talk to Rafi. Uh, real quick, uh, Rick Merriman said marriage is not worth it. Yeah, and, and, unless it's um, sweet and can make biscuits and gravy, right, babe? Or make um, McRibs. From scratch, no. Heidi can make McRibs from scratch. <laughs> no, I'm not it's making that up. Gravy. That's how she got me from her cooking, actually. Really? That well, was it. Well, I cook for you every day, but you you cook for me every day too. And what about your company couch? That's not a company couch. That's my couch. What are you talking about? There was no company couch. I know there was just an office and chairs. So what about yeah. what about the office? Yeah. I, well, the okay. There is a company couch. It's called, you guys can check it out. Um, it's called Casting Couch. And the website is, I'm, I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. All right. Right. So, again, the tricycle driver, it has nothing to do with this topic. However, this is what happened. Okay. Give me a little bit of money. It's not much, but. Oh, because. Uh, it's, 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 okay. it's, 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 it's not much, but just something, you know? Yeah. Just to help. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, no, you're. Thank you. I feel for you. Kids are beautiful, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much for. No, no, if I had more, I'd give you. His wife is in uh, another country. Yeah, I know her, Jim. Having an affair with another guy. Oh, no, that's terrible. Yeah, they said you're a nice guy, you have a big heart. All praises for what okay. you've done, especially to uh, one for complainant when you gave him money. Actually, a lot of them cried for what you did. Yeah, so again, it, that's a show of character that Again, he's actually a nice guy, and unfortunately, I say unfortunately, this kind of makes him a big giant, put, paints a big giant um, bullseye on his back, if that makes any sense. Not, you know, for scammers and such, you know what I'm saying? If he's outside, he's a target for, you know, muggers and that kind of stuff. And if he's just this, like, all the time, again, unfortunately, this makes you a target. Now... I'm not saying don't be nice. I'm not saying that. Just be you. You know, I'm saying don't pretend to be somebody else. Just be you. If you're nice, you're nice. If you're, you know, not so nice, but still nice enough, just be you. Um, and what I'm getting at, be aware that the thing is, again, when it comes to victims, be aware that regardless of what anybody says, here's the fact. The fact is, no victim, again, asks for asked to be victimized okay what i'm saying is um anybody who's been um a victim of a crime of grape whatever they didn't ask for it they didn't say anything it's kind of like if it's not them it's the next person what i'm saying is if somebody's planning to rob maim and x you it's really not nothing to do with you. It's you're just there at the wrong time and wrong place. So also be aware that in this situation, I get it. He's really nice. He makes himself, he stands out. That's the only thing that he did. Now, remember, I said that he did. I didn't say he did wrong. He just stands out. And that's somewhat makes him like a magnet for scammers. Mm -hmm.
si uh, Mrs. Marcelita Barker, the wife of Mr. Barker. Ma'am. First things first, okay. regarding yeah. the cheating. We're, yeah, go ahead. I'm just, we're here to... The... We decided to to get a condo, rent to own. Yep, okay. Yes. Always bounce check like that, no? What do you mean always bounce check? Um. So he issued bounce check, Mr. Mine, Barker? Mine, mine. Hmm. Okay, so why here did you issue bounce check? I know, just, because... Real quick, she he, just... He's obli- yeah, she just literally got in the studio and she wasn't even there she wasn't even there for a few seconds because there was three parts to this so that's why we broke this down into smaller we weren't going to break this down into three um different things we decided to do one live stream and react understand that she just entered the studio and the first thing she did was tear down his character immediately mentioned bounce checks this woman has been sent 80,000 pesos a month money to keep her store going. He's, he's paid for the store. He's paid for everything, including three children that are not his. Okay. And the first thing she does is talk about a bounce check. (laughs) The hell. I think everybody does AJ. Yeah, I can't, I can't. Well, I I can't put that up only because they might think um, it's a it's a personal attack if that makes any sense, AJ. But um, it's a more common look than most people realize. Oh yeah, it's like that one channel that keeps coming up over this uh, Cebu situation. They keep coming up in the feed of Facebook and YouTube over it. You know where he proclaims to be his best friend, and his his wife too has that typical. Um, I said she looks Aida and something else, but she looks like a mountain girl in um, Mexico. So it's just, it's just look, it's just a Filipino, what they call an exotic look. Obligation to pay the rent to own. Mm-hmm. And then we understand yes, because Ruby. that time our life is uh, very down. <laughs> um, uh, so that means he wasn't giving enough money to, to uh, the, pay the, for the uh, yeah, rent to time, own? Yeah, that's why, yeah, that time. Times, that's why it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand him that time because... Uh, you weren't you working asked. at that time? You weren't working? No, not. No. You because were asking 70,000, 80,000 pesos a month to live Yeah, I have, I have a... a 70,000 a month. 70 to 80, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> the condo. I have here the receipt and the billing. The How much is the uh, mortgage for the condo it's monthly? Thirty-four thousand. Thirty-four. Yeah. He's Still sending you seventy to eighty thousand pesos right, a month. Sometimes times, that's yes. more than enough. Yeah. Okay. So bounce check monthly. You know. Did you tell him about that? Yeah. And, and did no, you I, include that I give yeah. money for this business, money for that business? Oh, wait, You're wait, supposed wait, to be wait, really father, like stress and depressed. Constantly bleeding him. Yeah. Bleeding the guy. No. Um. And actually. Full disclosure, just so you guys know, this, especially this part of the, the, this video is heavily edited. And the reason why it's heavily edited is because it's there are act- two sensitive subjects in here. So we have to, well, that one I bleeped out, but the thing well, is, I can say, do you want me to break it down legally for YouTube? Term? Well, it'll, they'll say it in the other words. Anyway, they'll say it in other words. Oh, they will say yeah. it in there? Yeah, but okay. what I'm getting at is the problem is is whenever they ask her a question. Hey, Hector. She, if I didn't say, hey, she hey, gives Ruby, the Shekel. most roundabout Racer answer X. there is that leads to nowhere. And unfortunately, I had to edit those out because it it's just nothing but blabber. And literally blabber, like nonsense. like like Kind of like when I'm going on about the grocery list and I'm talking about butter and butter and more butter and butter, butter and butter. And George is like, okay. Something like that. Right. It's actually when I edited the video, I'm like. Or movie night. It was like the my my little red flag became a big giant red flag because it How, was babe. it was nonstop nonsense. Babe. And kind of like when I explained the color purple. Okay. Yeah. Something like okay. Harpo all right. and all that. Well, okay. what I'm saying is, again, it's. It's nonstop nonsense that she always throws mm-hmm. in. Uh, it basically, she she doesn't stop about it. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is how toxic this person is. She's so toxic that, like I said, she she takes the littlest things and she 
she deflects. Right, correct. Right going in circles, no direct She's answer. Deflecting. And that's, and that's why what's going in a circle for her. Unfortunately, I did have to edit it out because that's all she did non stop like blabber. Three quarters of this was her correct. going on about the checks. Did you leave the medicine thing in there? Yes, yeah. Well, part of it, yes. Because okay. again, it's not she'll go blabber, on yeah. 20 minutes about medicine here in a minute. So she mentioned a check. I think it happened once or twice, but he was still sending money to her. So why didn't she? She was expecting the 70 or 80,000 pesos a month and for him to pay the mortgage. And he was restocking her store and three kids belong to the same father there. How many kids do they have together? Two? Two, two sons, but initially had the stepdaughter with him. When they met, they there was only one step. Well, it's the two sons, but somehow he's attached to the yeah the original child. Yes. So my my guess is she was she probably never left her high school lover. That the father of all three of the kids is her high school boyfriend. When they met, which has now officially been fifteen or sixteen years ago, there was a daughter. Okay, she was in the picture. He had two more kids with this girl. So three with the boyfriend from high school that she's married to. Okay. And then those two had two sons together. So, and it, it's just a constant blame thing going around at this point. That I told, I told you. So when you got stressed and depressed, then you started cheating on him. No, 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 no. I said here. I can't help myself monthly. I'm so stressed and depressed. Thinking of billings, hiding for the collector man, of billing, I can't do nothing. I don't need material things. I don't like big house or appliances or money. All I want is a piece of mind. Nothing to worry. If they're gonna cut my electricity and people laughing at me, I'm upset to not to you, but with my life. My dad is dying, but man, I can't even give him any little pleasure in life before he died. If only I'm working abroad again, at least I can make him happy. But to look, but look at me. If he needs some help, I'm just trying to ignore him and pretend that I never get their text messages. It kills me. You can't blame me. I'm tired of this. I'm stressed. Uh, this of stress things, man. I want only very, very simple life. No stress to think. Every day, every night, I'm thinking what tomorrow again. I know your effort. And I appreciated that. But man, I don't need a house that makes me burden monthly. Just a small house that nothing to worry. I've come to your life at your worst time. And I don't even marry you for anything but because of you. I'm stuck. That's what I thought, yeah. It's <laughs> I love that part. That's my favorite part. That's what I thought. <laughs> so I'm just like here. Nothing. I want to work, but you don't want me to work. I can help myself. Do we need to go through all the phones and show exactly all no, the other no, stuff? No, no, yeah, no. It's, it's in email. Yeah. Then I get depressed. Okay. Like, it's, it's, it's and I have run messages for how saying, many years? I'm going to the mountain because I'm depressed to oh, spend yeah. time in the mountain. What happened to the businesses that he bought for you? Oh, he said he bought some businesses put money in too, and Oh, yeah, the, the <laughs> business was in online. And yeah, I go to the mountain for the, for the charity. Here. Yeah, but I've also got all the pictures of you on the mountain with this man and my son. I go to the mountain. Who, who's the guy? The tambay? The bum? No, it's not the tambay. He's a <laughs> tambay, tambay, the and bum. And that's what he is because I think she she made a reference to him already or she will here in a minute, right? Well, she's defending him right now. Tambay, right. he's a bum. No, no. No, he's not. Yeah, Who he, is he? He's an OFW. Yeah. He's an OFW? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pause it after it says... Okay, now it says according to Marcelita, he is not a he's not a bum, and um the one that she's cheating with, um Norman is one OFW. Norman is the guy's name. Okay, it says, however, we asked him to come to the studio and prove with paperwork that he he is an OFW. Now, I some of you are like, well, if he's an OFW, it's possible he's not in the Philippines, he's working abroad. Yes, however, the thing with OFWs is paperwork, 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 paperwork. Right. 
Um, what I'm getting at is OFWs have plenty of proof, whether they in the Philippines or not, they should have multiple copies of their paperwork at home, meaning Marcelita, even though if he is an OFW, if he isn't in the Philippines, Marcelita should have access to his paper copies of his paper to prove he's an OFW. However, just so you guys know, this never happened. There was never proof it was an OFW. And again, no. if he is an OFW, there's tons. That'd have been more of a trip that because he'd have been making halfway decent money plus taking the foreigners' money. It, that would have been like a double gold digging session, right? If he if he was an OFW, there is no need for. Now, depending on an OFW, an OFW would make about 80,000 80, pesos to 100,000 pesos per month. So basically, they wouldn't need to scam anymore or if that's what she was doing. They, they said that he is a tambay because maybe because I don't know where... He's working hard. Yeah. So and you encounter tough times. Even. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is just normal sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But it's still no excuse to go off and sleep with someone else. And, and, and you know, like. I, I under, actually, he's okay, but... It's okay. Actually, as, um, yeah, even Ruby says, is she married to this Norman, you know? Well, you know, OPA will have records if he's an OFW. No, if you're an OFW, there's going to be positive proof you are what you... You are an OFW because, again, you have to be legal in both countries. You have to be legal here in the Philippines and in the country you're going in. So there's multiple paperwork. Right. And you know she what I'm saying? couldn't and he wouldn't appear. So, hey, Mom, if you're going through tough times, yeah. why do you have to cheat on him? We have decided to let's go get over Call it. it quits? You know, oh, yeah. There's no way we decided that. Mercy. No, I have a. I've got I've got all the messages yeah, for the last wait, years. Wait, wait. I love you. I'm coming to Australia at Christmas. Yes. All these things. I have here. All years. The... All right. So, um, in the first in the first section, um, there was a point. Okay, remember this is edited. Okay. Um, the deal is, is he said that he spent time there in the beginning. They got married. Then he came four or five times a year or something. He, he came several times a year and he still actually did. And at this point, it looks like she's actually stating that she's getting ready to make the full statement. Yeah, that they're and, not together anymore. Well, editor. But it's been, he, yeah. they had kids together before he met. And then they, he had kids afterwards, and he's been sending money for over 12 to 15 years to her. That's the insanity part. Right. Edited or unedited, the problem is with this story is... is and cash them out. I'm not, again, picking on anybody in particular. Oh. The, the, well, the problem is their stories are never clear. I'm not, again, not picking on anybody. For instance, he never said, that, oh, my son is with me. He lives with me in Australia. This is my firstborn from her. Yes. He never said any of that. So a lot of these things are very unclear. Um, what he's about to say is, again, his firstborn from her is with him in Australia. And this is this well, is the child. Have, he has two. He has a son. Right, right, right. Well, no, no, no. I know. Verified all but that. But that's what so. I'm saying. It's a lot of it is unclear. Now, I'm, I believe it's on the Rafi side that they edited most of it out. But what I'm saying, it's not us editing that stuff out because, again, a lot of it is very We unclear. can't because she already talked about offering herself several times. You said there's more talking about what she did or that was in the stuff she typed. Will he talk about the child touching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah be, okay, yeah. so it, it gets crazier, guys. Um, it. And what I've decided to quit is also, you know, the life being miserable. Like, people think that... that I have a million in checks, a uh, million in the condo, which is rent to own. and uh, But you sold the condo for 500,000 uh, Here, I have here the evidence. One and a half because million. Well, so you would, no one's showing me anything. You haven't shown me anything. No, 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 no. I need, because I need to clear everything here. Yeah, because here in a minute doesn't, doesn't, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm. Well, well so they'll, they'll they'll what it. did you do with the 500,000 pesos? The proceeds from the he, sale? The unit you. is uh, ready for padlock. So, so you sold it for five hundred thousand. Assume balance. Yeah, Assume the balance, balance. Yes, was a million, I yes. think. Yeah. 
It's true. So one point five. Yes. Okay. But because okay. But when I when I come to Australia, she'd already been gone for two years. Yes. For a start, you'd been getting me to pay you the payments for the condo. Yeah. I've got all the records of you saying, no, please asked, send the I, money. I asked. I asked. What so two years, the condo is gone, and yet <laughs> you're sending her more money to make the payment. Remember, we said and that this he is was eighty thousand. So right. A month. But, Right, but it sounded like he was paying the condo payment on top of giving her the money. Yes, yes. So, yeah, even more money. So, right, and that's the problem. Um, oh, and just so you guys know, actually, that's heavily edited because she went around in circles about, oh, I don't have money to pay this, I don't have money to pay electricity, I don't have money. It just went around I in circles. I couldn't pay this. There's no way I could have. It's very didn't. embarrassing like to our neighbors. He didn't actually pay her once or twice out of 12 years because he was in his own problems raising their son. No vacations. Why? She went on vacation several times. A trip, man. I want to be her when I grow up. Grow. You can't. You can't grow up. She's smaller than you. So you have to grow down. Speaking of growing up. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, no, no. That's your biscuits and gravy. No, no, actually that joke came from they in the US they always told me, George, when you grow up, you want to grow up to be tall enough to punch somebody in the nose, right? You know, it it's a it's a I know it's, it's a height joke. Anyway. For the money for the kids also as well. No, but you asked for the condo. It clearly Never says, can you send the condo that. payment I need, this month? I, because I need to pay for the so. condo unit. Uh, the but one you weren't there. You'd been gone for two years. Why am I paying for a condo that you weren't in? You've been gone from that condo for years. You told me that you pawned it and that I was still no. able... No. This okay. Now, when he said you pawned it, that makes more sense for the 500000 amount. Right, considering it was three times the amount. So, so where is all of this money? Show me the money. I mean, I, I especially, I can't imagine any place in Tondo Direct. Maybe she moved on over to Makati, and I mean, she had to be like balling right, right. at or, this point. Or Scuba Gooding Jr. That's what I mean. I would, I would be dreaming to have that kind of money right now, and that's not even a joke. We never claim exactly to be rich here. Right. Words don't lie. No, because you, I have you been told also, me to my face. I have also heard the conversation that it's already US assumed balance. I know that's the stuff you sent yes. me. But I'm saying when I arrived and the condo was gone, you told me. I said, what's happened to the condo? You said you pawned it for so much money. No, no I no, have let here. Me, let me speak. Yes, I don't okay. care what you've got there. I'm just saying what you told me because you told me you lie. And now, money he sent like monthly. Here's an important part what he said. And it. To, to a lot of you, it doesn't, it's not of, of no consequence, but it's actually a big consequence. He says, let me speak. No, that's not the part I'm getting at. He says, I don't care what you have over there. I'm telling you what you told me. Because remember, all the paperwork she has, he has no access to. He's just going by with what he's, she's told him, which, of course, could be completely different from all those paperwork mm -hmm. that she has so much it's hard to tell so you basically told me you pawned the condo and that the man that you pawned it to was renting it out to workers oh, for the interest and like that i had to pay the one million and the one and the six hundred fifty thousand you borrowed and then the condo was still ours what? and you told me that he could sell it and i would get my 2.5 million back out of it let's talk about the bigger issue which is why did you cheat on him I notice how many times actually from the start this is all Rafi Tufo has been asking. Why did you cheat? And then again, the oh my gosh, for a whole 20 minutes, she he keeps asking that question. Why did you cheat? And the she gives this roundabout answers. You know what? The Easter Bunny and Jesus are probably sitting up there at the basketball court right now with that guy reading the Bible, covering their eyes over this woman. Right. <laughs> probably sitting in that toilet. Toilet area. Wow. I'm so depressed with, you know, financial problem. So stress, was I. And then, right? He's just trying to. I told you a few times I could have got one, someone to buy it. I, I don't like. I don't like the situation like this. Every time he went there. What's What's the name of the guy, by the way? Because right now we're just giving him a, a tambay, a name as tambay. Oh. So what's no, his real name? It's not Norman. Norman. Oh. So, 
So this is the reason, you know, this is the reason as well. Because reason what? Every time he went here in the Philippines. What was the reason why you cheat on him? Or on no, 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 not cheating. It's, I mean, that's the not reason cheating. why I give up. Because cheating? every time he went here, he just here purchased. Go. No. The yeah, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, Yeah, hey, share, it's share. It's illegal, right? Huh? It's illegal. Hey, share, yeah, it's yeah. illegal here. I had a prescription for it. But Where? it was cheaper to buy Where? here. In Australia. But it was cheaper Where to buy the... here. And I told you that. No, and then why you need to put in your bottle? Because you can't, le you can't take no, it through. No, but, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's illegal. What is yeah. SGH? It's, it's uh, a steroid. human growth hormone. And it's... And a steroid? It, yes. No, it's steroid, not a steroid. steroid. Yeah, it's not a steroid. steroid. It's human growth hormone. Okay. But it's, you have a it's, steroid. It's, I had a I had a prescription, but a prescription in Australia. For it. Yeah. No. But in Australia it was maybe two or three hundred dollars for one week's worth, and here I could buy. So what do you use it for? Breaks my heart. No. no yeah. So, so so you have a heart condition. Yeah. And you use that for my heart. For your yeah. heart. Oh. And at the moment and I have a prescription, prescription, for, prescription for a thing called. No, I know peptides. because you're selling that. You're selling that. See. You're where's selling the, it. You, where's the prescription? Why you? I, Wait, well, I, can, I can organize yeah, it all. I, you need to send I've us. got a prescription right now for peptides for the same thing. Really? You're such a great storyteller. It's amazing. No. That was the reason you went and slept because with another man and then spent four years making me pay you money, waiting for you to come, having your son wait and so cry, now, telling now me every change, month. Now you change the topic. No, I'm see? just saying. I'm just no. I want to see the whole reason. And You're trying to, to find every clear, nasty I thing. Clear. This is the reason. Okay. Also, because it's not the reason. It's the reason. It's the reason. It's illegal. Yes. But uh, what she's saying, it's a, it's it's basically illegal because I, I took it to Australia. Pizza. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Okay. I thought at first this was an illegal drug like shabuk. Or no, 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 no. It's health. But yeah. This is it's athletics. This is, well, okay, for athletics. Sorry. He probably needs it for his art. No, no, now you're no. the one changing the topic. Why did you? Yeah. Well, oh, she's been. Okay. Now, actually, again, I edited like a good seven minutes of this because all it is is her hair accusing the expat of you basically drug dealing and it's not and it's kind of like remember what we told you that certain things here don't require a prescription well depending on where you go don't go to south star drug they always ask for a prescription um for example um in most um, pharmacies tramadol and lyrica which normally requires a prescription in the u.s here you don't need one so basically all he's doing is basically buy his you know, medication without prescription here and then taking it back to Australia. Which so, she was trying to say was illegal because he was putting it back in a pill bottle. So she went on for 20 minutes trying to make him look bad. And it's legal here, but supposedly it needs a script back in, in Australia. Australia. Right. Because remember, so she went through the whole thing right. to say that he took back several hundred that he was selling it back. Right. There. And he said that again, like, for 50 pills, it costs $500 in Australia versus right. here, you can pay 100000 and get six months worth. You right. Know? So. so it's kind of one of those things. And again, it's not so much it's an, again, here, again, uh, medication is certain ones, certain ones, not all of them. Certain ones are cheaper than the ones in the West. Yeah. Using this to threaten me just recently. No, if I, you I, told me if I go on Rafi, you're going to sell these things, and I said, not a problem. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm All not the things. Please yeah. answer the yes. question. Another Why did you cheat on him? Because sure. of that. And because of this. The depression. Did you know that you can get on. arrested for having a relationship with this guy when, in fact, you two are still married? Well, are we? That's my next question. Because yes. you told me that my marriage was made null and void. I don't know. Well, that's what you told me. Know. When I said to you, how could you sell the condo without my permission? You said to me, you didn't need it because my marriage was null and void when we, I did the annulment for you. In January, I told you, I have a choice. I either lose my farm or I keep the condo. You said keep the condo. The condo yes. had been gone for a long time. Let yes, the brothers yes. speak. Yes. Right. So He's he lost brother, right? the yes. farm too, okay. literally. Like brother, would you like to say beginning. something? You can say it in Tagalog. He sold everything. Kung ako sa'yo, magpakumbabaan nila. Ah, yes! That's why I'm here. Hindi mo na dapat kailangan pambanggitin kung ano yung... Kasi kiniklear ko lang kasi... Kasi... Kung sinasabi mo... How long did he know about it and then continue to send money? Uh, was it... Uh, did it ever come out how long he knew? He no. knew for a while, didn't he? Well, and he said he felt sorry for her? No, no, he did stop, but he sent... He, he stopped sending the condo money. But he does have kids with her, so he still sent money. 
Yeah, he still but, has kids with her. Yeah, I mean, but you, he didn't he's just 80, being responsible. Yeah, 80,000. That's super right. responsible. Now they brought in the brother again. Because remember, the brother's on the expat side. Um, He says, if I were you, I'd humble myself. He says, I don't, I wouldn't dig stuff up and attack this guy. That's what he says. It's like, <laughs> don't attack him, you know. Be humble and ask for forgiveness. That's what he's saying. Muna nagda-drug siya. Ay, hindi siya, eh, hindi ko sinasabing na, nagda-drug. Sam sa akin, concern ko kasi. Although naman na, noon pa naman, binabanggit mo naman sa amin na gamot niya para sa puso yan, di ba? So he says, he, the brother himself says, why are you mentioning that he's using illegal medication? You yourself told us it's his heart medication. His, his own, her own brother actually said this. You yourself told us that this medicine is for his heart. Well, we don't believe she ever sold the condo outright. How did she sell the condo if he's on the title? It seems like she pawned it and took the took it in and did something else with it. And here in the Philippines, it's a lot of people are still thinking about that on the Western mentality side. It only takes a few shady attorneys or people that are in higher positions or fixers that can do all of this. A lot of things can be done under the table. It's not, you know, it could be done in the U.S. too, but here it really can be done. Right. Speaking of medications. She probably used his money to do it. Right. Just so you guys know, um, Heidi has a good point here. If caught at, at customs, oh, it's grounds. Oh, Ruby, Ruby yeah. If, in a, at our show, customs grounds for imprisonment. Um, right. She says sniffer dogs are everywhere at the airport. You don't need to mess with it. Now, here's the I thing. I don't think they would smell well, no, no, out the, the peptides. Sniff, that's what I'm saying. The sniffer dogs are not going to find it because it's not illegal. Looking man. for the white it's powder not illegal. the green. It's not illegal D-R-U-G-S. It's not. It's medication. And However, he, what, if you don't have a prescription. And he had a prescription and a bottle marked with it. So all he did was refill the bottle. That's what she was trying to throw him under the bus. Right. The cheating, him selling all of his property, all the money she sent, having kids with another man, all of these things. She wants to talk about him switching pills that are legal here into a bottle. And taking them to Australia, which they're still legal in. He just needed a script yeah, for them. For those of you who study manipulation, this is called deflection. It's like a high level. Where are we going to get to? Oh, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The the bombshell. There's still more of a bombshell. Pero wag mo na iungkat kung this ano yung dapat na hindi ko din down ang sa akin kasi yung reason ko kasi ganito yon nagtataka lang ako bakit kasi kailangan yung yung powder doon sa vials bakit kailangan i-transfer you, you tayo know what, sa you know what, ano? actually just to clarify okay what she's saying okay which doesn't make sense to me her logic the the thing is the medication that she gets for him is in powder form who takes medication in powder form i'm gonna ask everybody in the room does anybody take medication in powder form do you i take bc powder all the time oh, B oh. well bc powder is different but she says <laughs> you missed her she was asleep look at her. her exact words is my my issue is is why does he have to put it in capsules and i'm like God, can we get off this medicine thing, man? Well, I'm just letting you know what she says. And it, that's the kind of roundabout logic I'm getting at okay. is, again, it's like, okay, what? Do you know? Even the Philippines taking medic. I don't even know if they have BC powder other than 7-Eleven. Other than that's where I am, so I take it for no guess. <laughs> That as a defense, you should have told him that long ago. Well, you should she's have been used, she's only used that me just when she knew I was coming here. Yeah. Mom, you just used that. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. she yeah. also told me I go to too many bars. How many no. bars have I been to? Three, probably, in the whole time we were together. And then, why did you say that? It is. I said that to her. 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 Okay, so the brother says again, he says, be humble, ask for forgiveness, stop attacking him. And she, and then she keeps on. And then Rafi says, just so you know, the people online are getting upset with you. 
I guess he has a live, I guess, because he's looking at a tablet, I guess. That's kind of, you can't see. He says, the people are in line are getting upset with you. Can you please answer the question? Why did you cheat on him? He says it in Filipino, of course. That's what he said. Uh, because you're depressed? And, and I then? Want, I want life na... A simple life. Ng... Yeah, she told me that. Yeah, okay. And I was sad because I was waiting years stress. without my kids. And even gusto ko lang kahit walang... walang... Okay. So, so then you pe- say... Pero alam mo na pwede ka ma-aresto dahil kasal pa kayo ni Mr. Barker and you're having yes. a relationship with this guy. I mean, I, I knew long ago that she didn't have as much love for me anymore. I knew that. Yeah. But you come to me and you say, look, honey, I've met someone else I'm in love. And then you don't make me pay for the next four years while you have babies. You're hiding off camera when you're pregnant. Cause, so I couldn't work out why you weren't coming on camera. At meron ka anak dito sa guy na ito? Yes. Three times. Norman. Three times. Norman. Now, he says earlier, he spoke in short English. You do realize everything you've done and shown here, you can be arrested for it. And that's what he said in Filipino. And then he went on. Yes, they have kids together. And the gentleman further up just said that it is an illegal substance and control. Well, yeah, it is. We said there's a prescription for it. So, and he claims he has a prescription. The only thing he did wrong was bring it into the country, which, yes, there could be a charge. So, right. Well, not like the ones that she actually could have coming. But like I said, as long as if you're here and you're using it here, that's fine. You don't have to worry about a thing. Because again, here it's it's completely legal, you know. Again, like I'm just giving very common medication that a lot of people for familiar with and use. Again, tramadol and Lyrica; these require prescription in the U.S. But here, again, they're completely legal, and you can buy them over the counter, except for South Star. Don't go to South Star. Anyway, mom, swak na swak sa kulungan. You can go to jail because Yun lang naman po yung, the ma'am. fact that you are still married to Mr. Yes. Barker, and then the Yun fact that you have three children from Mr. Dakanai. Yes. You can go to jail. Yun lang po naman talaga yung ano eh. Would Siguro, you like to tell him about pinili, as well? Pinili. Yeah, yeah. inaccuse nga nila eh. Your, na, your yung child ano from Mr. Barker? No, no. Our hey, hey, stepdaughter. Our stepdaughter. Who the your stepdaughter? Yun nga yung inaccuse po nila. So, ang sa akin. I told her and she just said no. And she still lives with the man. A man that would touch your daughter hindi, hind- and no. you live with him. And, and sabi ko nga That's sa evil. kanya, dapat show, hindi mo in- ina-accuse, gumagawa ka ng ganyan kahit nga yung million-million na kinalat niya sa akin. We've got proof of her the telling condo, the relatives. Million-million, and then okay. now you, it's you accused what, my... You know what, ma'am? Did, my... Did... Okay. Um, his stepdaughter, the one of the three kids with her high school boyfriend or her other husband that she's legally married to also she knows that he is a child toucher so the father is committing an act against his own daughter there at the house and the mother knows about it and she's known about it Yeah. Now, um, first off, of course, she denies it in Filipino. She says it's not true. Um, she also says it's kind of ironic. She says you spend millions and millions on the condo and now you accuse him of this. It's kind of ironic. There's two children, Mike. I've seen where you've mentioned that twice. There are two children that exist for him. Not just one, but he does have the oldest son with him at the yeah, house. He, has he still the, does. Yeah, he has the firstborn with her. Because at the very beginning, he said with two him children. in Australia. Yes, and he said he had two children. Do you, you understand what your brother was telling yes, you a while yes, ago? Yes, you yes, were not yes. listening. Okay, <laughs> what he was telling you was. Magpakumabaka, yes. Be humble Actually, and then ask for forgiveness or, yes. or, or, or say something. Three times I offered to forgive last, you. Last you told yeah. me you'd separated from Norman. He had taken the three kids and you were alone and you were depressed and sad. Yes. Then what happens? I find out you still have the shop. Because you're still with Norman. You um, haven't got a food cart. Nothing. No, because my, my, my brother, my sister, the one who told me that, Mercy, just tell them. Okay. So now you're blaming them. No, 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 I'm 
not blaming. Well, that's what you're saying. You're saying I'm not, they no, told I'm you not to lie. Blaming. I'm okay, not blaming. Mr. Barker, are you willing to file a case against your yes, wife? Yes, definitely. Oh, I, got, I gave you opportunity to make good on this, and you just lied constantly. You never. There wasn't one moment since I found out about that that you haven't lied. I gave you chances. I mean, I loved you more than the world. You know that. I waited eight years. My son, my son has been waiting for all those years for you to come to Australia. I've been waiting for the other kids to come to Australia as well. I've been without them all that time. Yes. And in the meantime, you're having fun with another man. You're having no, babies. Having what, what can you say that can defend that? There's no. nothing. Nothing at all. Ano reaction mo, ma'am, na pwede ka makulong? Maybe. He says, what's your reaction about you being arrested? You could be arrested. No, I right. made a mistake. Um, wait Maybe. a minute. Simple Man says, just back. she married to a guy but has been in Australia for four years and had kids with another man. No, she had kids. Throughout the time, not just after that for right. No, there's a stepdaughter that was, I believe, the real firstborn. Her real firstborn. I say his firstborn with her. Remember, I, I'm very selective with my wording. And just children throughout. Yeah, her the years. firstborn is with Norman. Oh, and stash and correct. And then the son who's in Australia is um Barker, Bake Barker's or Clint's. Um, firstborn with her is the one with him in Australia. Right. Yeah. I know it's somewhat confusing. And I don't yeah. think that she popped him out during those four years, the other three. That's just not, or the other two. I don't think that's actually possible. Well, yeah, I guess it yeah. could be. But according to him, it's been and on, time. And again, um, I'm just letting you guys know again, it's from Rafi's team, not Thank us. You. Yeah. When they did the editing, um, a lot of the story doesn't fit. They omitted again, like they didn't establish the kids. They didn't establish a lot of things. So you have to like figure it out as you go along. Yeah, I only know. He said I had right. two kids with her and then he mentions the three on the other side. So it's kind of like, right. Near. And I mean, I may sound partial here, but again, I went, I only know a lot of the story because when I edit it, I have to listen to every word. He and, only came a few times a year, Simple Man. That's what I'm saying. Right, from no. the very beginning, he only appeared four times when they first got married. They were married for over 12 years, okay? And it's hard saying when the divorce had even gone through. And then he started going like once a year. He just stopped going. So he just slowed down. So that's why. Yeah, hit it, hit it on camera. But then she could have stashed the kids when he came back in town once a year. She just continued to collect well, the money is what's really the bad thing. Is she continued to have children with the man that she was living with? The condo was probably a stash, you know, a stash house. Like that's where she stayed and had him somewhere else in the other area. Yeah. And and hiding um a, a man or a woman at that for that matter who's Filipino kids is not unusual. It's here. easy to do with an expat. And again, I'm not being um prejudicial or anything. For the most part, a lot of people don't have um, a very high recognition skill. What I'm saying is when they go outside their race, um, kind of like Asians can tell Asians apart versus a Westerner can't tell. Uh, most Westerners can't tell Asians apart. That kind of deal. Same thing. Like, I lose George in a crowd. Right. Kind of um, for the most part, a lot of Filipinos will somewhat, somewhat kind of blend in, if that makes any sense. So it's kind of easy to hide you know, your kabit, as it were, I'm uh, meaning your side chick or, or side guy again. And then it's easy for her to say, Oh, that's a neighbor. Oh, that's, that's my brother. Oh, that's my cousin. Remember, those are the first, the, the three common ex excuses why a guy or girl hangs out a lot. Oh, that's my brother. Oh, or that's my sister. Oh, that, you know, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my neighbor. And again, it, I mean, guys have some common sense here. You know, when when your brother and sister somehow like, you know, get spent too much time together, you know, alone, that's kind of like questionable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Got gotcha, you, simple man. Maybe you made a mistake? No, Are you sure I it's made only a maybe? mistake. I made a mistake. OK. Yeah. I just maybe maybe I choose a life that, you know, I have nothing got a, but even I haven't so got hard. a problem with that. But you don't you come and tell me four years ago even that so you hard, don't just yeah. keep going. 
It's been so hard. You know, a mistake is when you forget to pay for a packet of chewing gum at the shop. It's when you maybe sleep with a man on a night out. It's not when you set up house, have kids, and live off my money because you can't tell me you weren't because I've got I've got receipts here for giving you because about also, eighty thousand dollars plus the yes, five hundred thousand. Yes, you just also <coughs> sending money like that, but I also pay for the condo. You Mom, know, yeah. with the Mom, yes, what? If I were you, I would ask for forgiveness yes. and see. Actually, what I offered, but I offered, and then she constantly lied. Every day she lied. Instead of fighting with him. Yeah. Yes. I can't give forgiveness now. It's gone too far. Uh, are you still willing to forgive no. her? Not anymore. I gave her opportunity, opportunity, and what they did is evil you and cruel. You want her to go to jail? I want her in jail, yes. I'm sorry, but he needs to go to jail as well, a man, for trying to touch my daughter. Both of them? Yeah, definitely him. I offered, I offered her, I said, if he goes down to the the jail and he tells them what he done and he goes in jail for his crime i would give her a chance we've got messages text from her saying that he tried to touch her let's ask the brother yeah okay kuya gusto ni mr barker may pakuloy yung kapatid mo anong reaction mo sa ganun parang pwede pero dapat uh, pag-usapan muna hanggat pare ngayon bibigyan ko siya ng mabigat na deal okay what is the deal kapatid ko what's the deal yung dalawang anak niya Right. na hindi niya na dapat kailangan pakilaman, kailangan sa kanya na. Ayun na yung pinakakabayaran. Do you uh, understand what he said? Nope. Okay, he said he wants to make a deal with your wife that your, your two children will go to you. Yeah. The, uh, the custody. The sh- um, somebody in there asked, was it his biological daughter? The answer is no. It's the guy's own daughter. It's the Tambi. It is the Filipinos real daughter norman norman that did that yeah. yeah and as far as the business is concerned it's a it's a novelty store i mean it doesn't say that anywhere in in the videos but you can read between the lines it's a novelty store they sold um odds and then knickknacks that kind of deal yeah. you can again it's not actually in the video but you can a read small be- store you can there. read between the lines it's a novelty store Amen. Here, the common stores are again. It's it, there. There's a progression. Um, the first store most Filipinos or Filipinos start erect is a sorry, sorry store. The next step up would be the novelty store, meaning they sell yeah, knickknacks and stuff. <laughs> the next step above that would be your phone phone accessory store, and so on and so forth. There's a there's a progression. So it's a step above a sorry, sorry store. It's a novelty store. It again when when you arrive here you'll you'll know oh okay that's what he's talking about. He will surrender the custody for. I, I don't I don't care about that because I will get custody anyway when she's in jail. What difference will it make? This is the me. Oh. I offered you so many opportunities. I offered you everything, and you constantly, honestly, not one day did you tell me the truth. You told me you're in a province working on a food. My owner. brother and sister told me not to just to keep. S- okay, so now oh. you're again saying your brother and sister lie. Yeah. Told you to lie. That's you why that? I don't know. You, you, you and your sister told her to lie to me. Sila ang nagsabi sa akin na wag kang makikipagkita kay Clint kahit anong mangyari. Sir, sir, we have to respect uh, whatever Mr. Rafi. Mr. Rafi. I would like to listen what he wants to say. I would like to know what his thoughts are. Mas maganda, humingi na lang siya ng dispensa. Humingi Paano na. nga kung sinabi niya, puno na siya? He is saying that it's best for her to just ask Paano for apology. Exactly. I, I was asking him, yeah, what, what if... Says, yeah. You don't want an apology from her because you really want her to go to jail. Na hindi na yon. Paano kung ayon niya ng apology ang gusto niya makulong talaga si sister? Reaction mo sir. Nasayon naman po yun kung ano yung decision mo. So pero, patay ka na makulong. Pero kung sana may isip mo rin yung dapat mangyari. One second. I'm gonna dra- address Travel Trends TV uh, said back to Gogo that he agrees. If you go to the Philippines, you will have to act like a Filipino. Immoral and without conscience. What do you think of that statement, George? That's somewhat prejudicial because now you just group a bunch of Filipinos into an immoral box, which yeah, which again, kind of. I mean, yeah. So both- honestly, the the immoral people that I know are very far in between, and again, and a lot of people who've been in the Philippines will agree with me on that. Even the ones that kind of hate things like you know oh they're doing karaoke 
you so, know what I'm saying? Yeah, Gogo for, further upset a few things, but one of them was the serious strict foreigners do not belong in the Philippines. It's not a place for ethics and morals. I would disagree, but what you can't bring is your Western mentality. Well, you're... You have to adjust to the way of life. It doesn't mean you have to drop all your morals and stuff. Well, when you get here here's the thing. And just you can't expect things to be the exact same way, but it's well, I kind of, yeah, accountability doesn't exist in the Philippine culture, is what Gogo said. No, no. Well, and this guy is being led to a false end. Okay. I'm going to argue with you guys on that one because, again, this is, again, you're putting all Filipinos in a box. And, again, that offends me. They'd be like doing And it doesn't offend me because it personally offends me. It offends me because that's like saying all Americans are immoral. Right. All Americans have or G-U-N-S and they, they, you know, shoot everybody on sight. That's somewhat what you're saying. What I'm getting at is be aware, too. And go go is from aware, Britain. You surround yourself with the people. Or saying all British people are the right. same. They're all sitting in bars by midday, right? It's drinking correct. and you know all that. all British people have bad teeth. Okay, you know that kind of stuff. You're putting everybody in a box. And again, the issue I have with this again, that's not how it works. Anybody who's it's traveled all, the world, everybody's an individual. Will know this, and also be aware. Here's the problem I have. When somebody tells you this, remember, you are surrounding yourself with like people. It's kind of like, you know, game recognizes game and therefore game attracts himself with game. What I'm getting at is you choose who you surround yourself with. Now, there's a difference between naiti naivety, which is this guy's naive, very naive. Um, and that's what made him a target. So, but remember, he met this girl in Tondo while he was doing his charity work, which again, the problem is with good people, they see good in everybody. And unfortunately, yeah, anywhere in the world, there are bad people. Right. Anywhere in the world, there are bad. Life is different right. here. And believe me, I mean, but I wouldn't state it the way right. that there's RGD last says two each did. and every person is their own individual. Um, yeah. Now, here, like simple manager, and just don't trust anyone, you can still hold on to your morals. Just don't be quick to trust others that's in, in any country. Um, this is a good defensive uh, mechanism, and it's something I would recommend to everybody. Okay. Um, the reason why I say this is because I'm the opposite. I'm the one who I trust everybody until you give me a reason otherwise, which is I don't recommend you. This is me. I'm just me. But simple man's journey said it well. Again, you don't, you can still hold on to your morals. Just don't be quick to trust others. And that's in my country, in any country, keyword, any country. So again, um, I'm not being. Because sometimes it's like the opposite where guys are coming from the West and other countries to come marry what they feel is a good girl or somebody different than the Western expat females or ex, I shouldn't leave the word expat or other females that are around the world. So it's kind of like, it's almost on, it's almost like the opposite, you know? Right. Now, just, just remember that. I, it's just again, wherever you are, like we said, right. where you are. Where exactly. I mean, wherever you are, that, that's I'm where you are. I'm not going to grow morals when and I get here, and I'm not going to grow stupidity you, when you I get here. You see things the way you want to see them, you, the way you want to perceive them. And I can't change that for you. And you can't However, change However, it's kind of like, remember the old, old, old cliche or adage, you know, half glass full, half glass empty. Same thing. I've always been a half glass full guy kind of guy you know but again it's up to you how you want to look at life it's up to you how you want to look at other people but again remember you can't bunch people in a box and say this is everybody just to be fair with anybody any race any country what would you like to, to happen sir you really wanted to go to jail the problem is that 
she can't get away with taking all that future from the kids and the fact that the man she's still every every night she sleeps with this man it's adultery still for me of course, you know? of course. and Plain the fact and is when she told me that she'd left him and and that i felt sorry for her and i said i will do a deal but she, she did. told me, no she didn't and the fact is it still comes to the fact that he tried to my daughter no matter what you say it's Please accusation stop it. stop. she has told I, I, the whole family never... I know you will yeah. never. I, I appreciate that you love him and stuff, but the whole point is no, I mean, he I needs to go to jail. Yes. Yeah. And get don't don't get involved, Kyla. Here it has to be. It has to be. He has to go to jail for that. Right. Because just a minute ago she said it's his daughter, so it's it's crazy. Don't get involved because the the stepdaughter of his he feel you know it he you know he's been around her and everything else, but. I guess the daughter was going around telling family members too. That's well, and remember, the brother is there, and he didn't contest any of this. He didn't say, "No, this isn't true. No, this never happened." He just kept quiet. Um, again, some of you will say that doesn't mean it's admittance. Some of you say that, that is admittance. Again, that's but the way I see it is again. In this case, it's kind of. The fact that he she says that don't get involved tells you something did happen because she said, "Hey, this has nothing to do with you," which means something did happen. She's just telling him that he has no right to get involved <laughs> because he's atrocious. now suffering oh, like depressed and hey, <laughs> Tony Manning. Okay, I bet they end up hugging. Okay, if all right, guys. Place your bets. Place your bets. Place your bets. Okay, who's gonna? Are they gonna hug? Are they gonna hug? Give me a twenty. Give me a twenty. Give me five. Five dollars. Five dollars. Ten dollars. Put a one dollars. up if you guys think they're going to hug here in a little bit, and put up a two if you think that he won't. All right. Place your bets, guys. Here we go. Should suffer depressed. Yeah. I, of, I've I've had four years of nothing. Yes. But he has to pay, and you have to pay no matter what. No, we, you, we you need to clear this clean for How do you clear it? If you want to file a case against her, you have to be here physically yeah. to go to the fiscal's office. Yeah, I'll have to, to file come a complaint. Again, I guess. So you cannot file a complaint right now. You have to go to Australia mm. because you have to catch a flight there. Yeah. When are you coming back? I've got to get some money together. So when you come back, then that's the time week you can file yeah. a case against her. Yeah. But right now you can't. Okay. Okay. You have to be there physically. I can't trust. So no more reconciliation. No. But she has to leave. A possibility of saving normal. Her. Possibility. Okay. He's happy now. Okay. Sabi ko kanina ni Ate Mercedita na kayo daw yung magiging patunay, magagaranti kay Sir na wala na sila ni Sir Norma na hindi niya nababalikan. So, oh. uh, ako mismo magpapatunay kay Clint na talagang wala na sila at bibigyan ko siya ng agreement na mapapatunay. So basically, they said that he's going to be the witness and he's going to be reporting to Clint that they actually broke up and they're not together anymore. Patunayan ko na talagang wala na sila. Para kung hindi man sila tumupad sa usapan, eh, bahala na. Tuloy ang kaso. So, he says, if she doesn't agree to the agreement, Bahalana, or I guess God's will, I guess would be the, the best translation. Bahalana, the case goes on, which means again, put her in jail, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says. Cleanan says if he can have an opportunity to have to spend time um, private in in the studio, you know, spend time with K Kyla, the firstborn, in a room by themselves. I mean, the cameras are rolling, of course, but he just, I guess, you know, he haven't seen her in a while. I'm sorry. All right. All right, guys, let's see. According to here, let's see. Let's see. One, 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 two, three, 
three, four. Gotta, gotta mix. We look like four ones. One, so four ones. One. So you guys two, think three, that they because the two is that five, they won't hug. Six. Correct. Seven twos. Four one seven twos. Here we go. For everything, the pain that I've caused you. We've been together for how many years? We're trying so much. Okay. I know you are. <laughs> but I've got to be closed off completely, you know? There it is, guys. They hug. And of course, that's how we're going to end it. Of course. Oh, I heard crocodile tears. Yes, that I believe that's please don't put me to in jail tears. That's what I would call them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Ross says this how Tufo always ends. Uh, Woody Light says it's disappointing. <laughs> Oh, dang, Travel. He says he left his Western wife for a jungle bunny. Gosh. Holy cow, you guys are harsh right. and hilarious at the same time. Wow. <laughs> um. Okay, go, go. Now, again, I'm sorry. You are who you were surrounding your people with. Honestly. The Filipinos, I know, I'm going to tell you right now, they don't want nothing to do with foreigners because they want to have a Filipino. Just saying, I literally, most of the Filipinos I know, I say most, I, I wouldn't say all because I wouldn't say all of them are, but I would, the ones that I know don't want to be with a foreigner. The ones that kind of do, they said, I don't know, maybe. It's not even, it's kind of like an afterthought. Like, yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, they they leave themselves open, meaning they're not, there's some that are like completely closed. Like, no, I don't want to be with a foreigner, period. But there are some like, well, you know, never know, you know, that kind of deal. But for the most part, the people, the, the women that I know personally don't want to be with a foreigner. So I don't know, again, which Filipinas you're surrounding yourself with or which, Filipinos are in that area. Again, it, it it's a very, you well, know. I, I disagree, and I know it kind of goes against some things, but did you, I'm sorry, did you get, I received a message. Did you get to the message where they said that um, a lower class Filipino? No. Because I don't. There can be somebody in a different money bracket and still have morals and not do all of that. Some of the nicest people in the world that don't want nothing from you and that you can marry. It is not 99% of Filipinas, because somebody made the comment about 99% up there are not like this. It's about the same balance of the Western women. I get so tired of hearing about the Western women are so bad in the U.S. and around or the women around the world or whatever, and everybody lifts all the Filipinas up here and then they get here and then they run into the same issues. It's about the same balance everywhere around the world, except for the women here, you know, tend to have more of a religious background. The fathers are in the households, all of that. And um, I would not say it's the class that they're in that makes them classless. No, so no, no. Again, it has classy. something to do with it. There are it, people with money that have no class, Again, so. like, Here's the thing, like um, Pablo Chicano says, I think it sure chose a lower class Filipino. Now, again, it's kind of like a, that's questionable. Because remember, now, the reason why I kind of like on the fence on that one, honestly, I, I'm, I am a Filipino, I'm on the fence on that one. The reason being is because you have the brother that goes going against with his sister, his own sister is going against his own sister. So basically, these are people with the same parents, same upbringing, same social class. And yet he's like, this is not right. This is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. You should stop this. You know, so again, has not, sometimes it has nothing to do with social class. Sometimes it has nothing to do with upbringing. Um, personally, I've seen it 
in in several families sometimes people are just born wrong and i don't mean like with disabilities i'm talking about like wrong in the head like to them morality is not even a it's not even it, it's not the in them and i'm telling you this person i know in the u.s again and i know families who've dealt with you know a lot of psychologists social services lawyers because one child is wrong and one just one you know what i'm saying and the rest of the, of the children in the family are perfectly normal perfectly fine and again it you can't again same thing you can't bunch everybody oh that's from that family they're all bad no you can't do that with people you can never do that with people um we men are dummies when it comes to women yes when it comes to magic punani you we're pretty much done for fact yeah you can yeah all right i'm going to drop a link if you guys want to join that's why i was asking george because we have a few things to do today and expecting some deliveries and stuff we'll go ahead and open up the floor usually we do uh mike ross says heidi is right in my own opinion the lower social classes want a corner um now the problem with that is i'm not disagreeing with you the problem is there are certain filipinos okay i'm not again nothing to do with the no. the irony is has nothing to do with social class too um from all from the rich elite from from the middle class to the lower class there are certain filipinos that says hey mija i want you to marry a foreigner a foreigner or something depending on how they say it. um they there are some certain families like that's their goal is to have their daughter or son to marry a foreigner and it comes from different walks of life from the elites to the middle class to the lower class although of course in the lower class i guess it would be more common because um some of them would be the ulterior motive like you know to bring them out of the you know out of the poverty middle classes it's same thing not necessarily poverty but to be richer now the elite class would be the reason for them is like oh it would make us the few our future generation taller bigger whiter you know what i'm saying it mm -hmm. they all have their own different agendas but i think all of that is starting to fade I think after the pandemic and with the reopening of the country, I think the dating game and what Filipinos or who they're dating, the game, the whole game has changed. It really has. And it's still going to continue to change with the online jobs and then paying uh, more and more positions online. And with the economy changing, I think things will change. Um, Travel Trend says, real talk, Heidi, my American wife was amazing. Mike Ross says, but the middle class and up, I don't think so. Well, again, I'm just telling you how it is. I'm, again, I don't agree with what I, most of the stuff I say I don't agree with because it's stuff I, it's not from me. It's, this isn't come from me. I, I'm not the one training my kids to, it's, I see this. I'm part of the, part of the Philippine community. I'm part of the culture. I see this. And again, yes, there are from, it's no different in the U.S., guys. Again, same thing. Um, so, certain um, classes, again, only have, hey, you have to marry this type of person. You know, it's not necessarily, of course, not Filipinos, but of course, others would be like, oh, you know, well, it, it would be, for example, in Britain, you, oh, I, we want you to marry a royal. You know, it, it varies per culture, per, but there are certain families that groom their own children um tim has the the brother probably doing against her because he probably feels she's brought shame yeah of course yeah. of course it is it is shameful yes 
Um, travel says they love to put Filipinos on pedestal like a fool. Correct. Um, you should never put anybody on a pedestal. You can, but to a certain degree. There's a difference between admiring and adoring versus well, simping. <laughs> I think it's just, I don't know. I've been asked a lot of times about what I think the same as people asking Filipinos what they think about the Western women and stuff. And the longer I'm here, I think about the guys and women do it too. These women go to Africa and the Bahamas and South America, the older ones that go for the younger guys and all of that. But most of it is guys and they travel to all of these places and places throughout Asia and stuff looking for actual wives and everything. And I, a lot of the guys, a lot of these guys don't change themselves before they go and do all this. No, they, they say they, they say the out same. Yes, the percentage of them, you know, the percentage of these guys scoring in the country for multiple reasons and being able to date after multiple marriages, and you know, like women having faults, guys have faults, and then they go to these countries. And they bring some of that mentality to these countries and they're expecting change. You go to a poor country and there's a lot of desperate people. He just happened to run into one desperate woman at that point. Right. And he met her online to begin with. It started with an online situation. I think the scam started from Jump Street. The daughter was already his and all the children were produced after that. So Right. And remember, the problem you have is when you put somebody, remember I just said, don't put somebody on pedestal, just put them on a stepping stool or something. Just You can adore them, you can love them, but you can't put them on pedestal. And the reason being is, it's a simple fact. When you put somebody on a pedestal, okay, that you, down there, Mike? you put them higher than you. Yeah. And once they're higher than you, you just made yourself not worthy of them anymore because now they look down on you that's the problem with putting somebody on a pedestal there's nothing wrong with adoring there's nothing wrong with admiring and adoring but putting somebody on pedestal making them feel like a goddess or a god makes them look down on you like oh if i'm that special so, so what were we doing in the beginning yeah babe? if i'm that special then you're not worth you're not worth my time so what was going on with us in the beginning Anyway. <laughs> hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, what's going what on? What is up? What is what's up? up? Ah, trying to get some sleep, you know? I know. You should talking about the pabasa, which is, again, the nonstop. Um, they they kind of turn the speakers down a little bit at night, but it, oh, you know, oh, even oh, with oh, the EDC oh, on, so you could hear everything. Actually, hold on. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. The pabasa. Okay. That's funny. Hold yeah. on. Be right back. Yeah, no, the pabasa again, um, every, nonstop praying, um, nonstop on loudspeakers. Um, yeah. No, it could be three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. No, it, it doesn't, continues. It, it doesn't stop. stop. It doesn't stop. And so usually people and like it's for a week. Year, we'll get some, for a week. We'll get some more footage on the other channel. The um, we uploaded some morning footage of them carrying the crosses. So. If you go up and down MacArthur Highway here in Angel City and Mabalocket City, you're going to see the guys carrying right. the crosses, the whips and chains and all of that. But up the up the road, they'll take food over to the person that is, you know, singing the Bible and all that, I call it. And Yeah. Um, so. Now, if you're in the Philippines, it seems like it lasts for two weeks, but not really. Um, Pabasa lasts for a week. But the week before... Um, I have what I call personally, it's a pre pabasa. It's, I even told Heidi, no, this is not the pabasa. These are just prayers. But they're, they're me, on a loudspeaker, though. It reminds me of the Middle East. So I know. Let's, let's, go do, let's go do some pambabasa right now. There ang mga evangelista ang nagsabit nagpahayag ng Martes muling makadi tong korderong marilag. At nangangaral. Come on, sa Mike, get it up, man. I mean, ang matantot maalaman yung taong karamihan. Mike, get it up. Kasi pangangaralan <laughs> nagsipasok sa simbahan. Tuway hindi ano lamang. Right there, baby. Yeah, Doing it right now. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, taking a break, man. Look, look, like this is how bad this book is. How old, how old is it? 
Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. It's been used by my dad and my mom for the longest time. Well, have you loaned out your, what is it that he has? Is Black this, Nazarene. Yeah. Have you, is that? It was supposed to come out January, but um, I didn't have any time. So um probably going to be loaning it out on July for the next um, the next thing. So we'll see. It's probably going to be at the uh, uh, the Filipino um, uh, in the Bayanihan over in uh, Tampa. So we'll probably have it oh, out. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so th this uh, Rafi was pretty shocking because it came up in our feed and I said, I was like, oh, snap, this hoe did everything, man. And then in the end, she knew about the, the kid touching and kids with both men. But I was telling George, I said, I feel that Bingsy met online. There was probably a scam from the get-go. Bingsy already had one daughter with the guy already. So, you know, the her high school boyfriend. Yeah, no, I I, I will... This this is the unfortunate thing, right? So, um, especially this is in lower value women. Um, a lot of low value women do what they call monkey branching, right? They're still holding on to one and they're trying to reach for the other, you know, to find something. And so, what what happens a lot with these women is like they're finding um, an escape because women typically, men typically end relationships, then go look for a woman. Or they get left and then look for a woman. Women yeah. typically will monkey branch to another relationship, either emotionally or whatever, um, before they even break up with the previous one. So that is true. Uh, We're pre planners and planners yeah. and everything. We're going to hang on as long as possible. Just going to be honest. And I was wondering if yeah. that was going to happen, Mike, real quick, because what you didn't see at the end is she went back and forth with them. And I told George that she was asked that that he has to wasn't he supposed to be turned in plus he she had to leave or something or leave the household or was he going to drop everything at that point no it was there it was on the end right but i told george i said she probably isn't going to leave because there's no resolution on it because she said she would but i'm like she's not going to leave the household that she's actually got and the only security because he said he won't take her back. That was the final word. Is he says he's not taking well, her back at all. The He'll issue, take her back. He'll yeah. take her back. Right. That's what I'm He'll getting at. The back. issue with the guy again. Double dipping. He's a softy. Like, oh, yeah. and it's it's a given. Like anybody who's seen the guy knows that he's like marshmallow. You know. Well, I mean, he's well, he, yeah, and he probably didn't have any like confidence, like. Because they showed the guy sitting down. I'm just saying the guy is plus size. He's got to be my size, probably bigger. So the dude is really big. And he's older and everything when he met her. So it's probably just zero confidence, babe. So he really got double taken, double dipping, huh? I think ever says she was double dipping. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's you know, hilarious. Thing, he just doesn't want her to be with the guy that got on him, that got between him. Like that that's the thing right there. He's like he just can't accept that there was this guy that came in between and yeah, is he in kept between. Sending money, man, no matter what. And he sold his farm. He did everything. We're talking, that's crazy. See, See I, I guess women just would go into rage. And if that was like George and I knew all that, I'd have cut him off plus paid somebody to hunt him down. What? Well, what? the the best way to look at it is this is that a lot of foreign guys are already on a a negative trajectory against their own chemicals when they come to the Philippines. So like a lot of, like you, if you break it down to chemicals, like what is the love hormone for women? Oxytocin. Mm -hmm. For men, it's vasopressin. So if you, so the fact the vasopressin is activated and increased with stress involved, which is part of your uh, mental, with part of your hormone that helps you be able to solve problems so with men looking for women in the philippines and they're trying to solve a problem of their loneliness of their um lack of you know lack, lack of connections what happens is they're coming in on a negative balance in regards for because their their stress levels up already, they don't know it. Stress is good and both bad. There's there's two different types. 
So th- what they don't understand is that vasopressin is elevated once you meet that woman. She's like, oh, I can solve my problems. So now your, your body is actually making you fall in love and you're not paying attention to it. And then when you add to the part that this woman has problems, and what do men like to do? Solve problems, okay, which women tend to hate as well, right? Women hate it. We're like, you know, I, you know, women will say something like, oh, you know what? There's this woman at work and she's, you know, always yelling at me, doesn't that? The guy goes, well, let's solve this problem when the woman actually just wants him to listen to her, right? But here guys goes, all of a sudden, let's solve the problems. Oh, you're poor. Let me give you money. Ooh, I solved that problem. Vasopressin goes up. You're falling in love. Uh, like you're, you're literally going, you know, so you have to pay attention to that as well. And most guys don't even understand just the basic chemical components that exist. So you already have a problem because you're going against your own chemicals already as, as, as it is as a man. So you, your job is really not to solve problems. Hence, we give the advice of like, don't try, don't send them money. Don't do this. Don't, don't solve problems them. that it's not your problem. It's her problem. Because if you didn't exist, who was going to solve that problem? She would have to. So when you jump in with this trying to solve problems for women, you're, you're already lost chemically wise. And if you don't pay attention to that, your vasopressin increases. So when men are in love, check their vasopressin level. Cause then you're going to actually see that's actually elevated. So, so, right. you know, now this guy is just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> now <laughs> exactly building on what Mike says, be aware a good woman, good woman again, is what Mike said. A good woman would say, no, don't try to fix it. Don't try to fix me. A manipulator would be like, ha, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? When you start fixing problems, they're like, gotcha. That's the bad side of, again, that you know that they're a scammer. Um, Barry in the PI says, um, actually, where is it? Yeah, Mary in the PI says I put myself on a pedestal every time. Maisha is not around. She would knock me off of it. <laughs> hey, Barry, how you doing? Right. I hear you, Barry. Yeah, that that's Heidi's job, too. To, like, get off of there. Honestly, I just don't care anymore, man. I just want to be left alone to watch my shows. And, no, she puts me up there, then, then takes the pedestal away. She just takes it. You know. I can just pay Sweep it from other the I rug. Just, I can just pay somebody to take that pedestal away. Right. I'm too lazy for that now. <laughs> um, Tony Manning says most men are fixers. Hey, yes, Mike, I are. think the crazy is starting to go away the older I get. I just, you know, I just don't care no more. <laughs> right. Just, it's, it, it's more like, you know, people tend to not see it as much because it's normalized. Oh, or people, just, like, people just end up accepting. Actually, I just think I'm just too old to whether I have high anxiety or whatever. I told George, I said, i just rather take a nap situation. <laughs> so it's just like, maybe it's just... Yeah, it's, Napping is always good. I take two naps a day. Yeah, I take more naps. Right. Um, <laughs> Mike Ross says, there's a term for Filipinos that apply that to a foreigner single since birth. Actually, I have okay. I haven't heard single since birth. What I've heard is virgin since birth. Same, same, same difference. Same exact meaning. Meaning that they're kind of um, like I think Rafi says salawal. I think is that what he, what he said? You know, salawal is your your um, underwear. Right. No, I know, but I think that's what he says. But anyway, um, either way. That's what it means. Virgin since birth, single since birth. Whenever you hear that terminology on a woman or man, I guess, means that they're loose. You know what I'm saying? Single since birth? Loose? Yeah. Um, single, I, I haven't heard single since birth, Mike. I've heard virgin since birth. That's what I've heard. I haven't heard single since birth. But So does that mean when they go born again, they're virgins again? <laughs> Or something yes like yeah exactly exactly so it, <laughs> they, it's funny whenever i hear again. that i just laugh my ass out because um i was talking to this girl in the market and then somebody in the background because remember when when you give a woman attention even though you're just being i was just being nice they think mm-hmm. that you're after her so somebody in the background says she's a virgin this person <laughs> i'm like i was like damn <laughs> hey babe what's wrong with that photo what's wrong with it 
<laughs> yeah. Huh? No. Oh. No, uh, he, we're not getting an answer from the guy. Because oh. we was able to locate the, the brother and the actual... Um, the brother that was in the show. And Norman? And, no, Norman. No, we weren't able to locate that side, but the actual Australian husband. So. Yeah, but they haven't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Ross says, yeah, that guy could possibly have been a virgin since he met a, that Philippine. Hmm. Dang. That's rough. Just I mean, it's sad though sad. you know it, it, it's just sad how it kind of goes you know you're going to the philippines because you heard some good stuff you know and then you come across that um that type of situation um but the thing is a lot of these guys will not see that type of situation in their own country right the the, the type of guy like the guy in the in in the i'm not saying all men or all guys coming into the philippines but in by far majority he would not see that type of event happen because the women that he wants that type is not going to give him attention in this country or he would not even put himself in the ballpark to try to approach a woman you know younger like that in his own country so you go to another country well that's what you're going to get you know right. but exactly. it, it, it's kind of sad now it's not said in the in the video um reading between the lines it sounds like this it's possible i'm just guessing here that the gentleman came over here on uh there are so, certain um groups in the west whether it's australia in britain or in in the us that gather up like church groups and they say okay we're gonna go to the philippines we're gonna do this to me that's what it sounds like what he did i'm just guessing here um mm -hmm. again there's a lot of blank spaces in the story and either way the problem i have or it's not it's not a real problem it is a problem but not a real problem when he arrived in the philippines i believe the gentleman has the knight in, knight in shining armor syndrome okay which means he has this neat um feeling or need to save this type of person from wherever they're experiencing in this case it could be poverty or something now be aware that knight in shining armor syndrome is not a good thing it's actually a toxic just so you guys know um because that leaves a lot of things open with the person with that with that problem meaning again if they feel like they have to fix somebody that's again you don't have to fix everybody um like the old spider in the tub in the tub test again a uh, spider's drowning what do you do do you save it what do you do do you let it drown the, the correct answer okay obviously this is not my answer but the correct answer is leave the spider alone because you don't know if it wants to be saved or not and that's the proper answer and what i'm getting at is like mike says the problem is men have a tendency they want to fix everything and the guy is a really nice guy which again aggravates the problem that he feels that he should save this particular woman out of tondo and that's what i get from the story and that left him open that and so he wanted he, affection so bad he needed like he didn't start crying till she hugged him right <laughs> oh see look tony Maddox thinking the same thing as i am he did not start crying till she hugged him. Yes. He's been true. wanting a hug. That's all he wanted. Uh, yeah. He like, and, 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 and so all she needs to do is be like, let's have dinner. Wham, bam, you know, maybe, you know, maybe go Four down. Years worth of pain. Get down, get down on it, you know, before dinner and then get down on it after dinner. There you go. And Magic he'll forget it again. He doesn't have enough money. He, like he just admitted, he can't even stay longer. He has to. He said, "What? I need to gather more money, then I'll come back." So the guy probably like gave this woman all of his money. Now he did everything. So you know, so I've that, seen so, his new place. It was like that. Yeah. So that that's that's the big problem that he has, and so it's like you know, you you're seeing guys do this nonstop. This is something that that continuously occurs in the philippines with foreign men it just happens 
and, and so you know the worst part about it is it's an epidemic i mean or it's a pandemic whatever because it's just it just continuously happens and we 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 got the uh the treatment for it but guys are refusing the treatment and so you know it, it's it's unfortunate that it's happening because I'm not saying this don't happen to Filipino men. It does. It does. It does. It does happen to Filipino men as well. Let's 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 not you know remove the fact that it doesn't happen. You know because because you see these comments of guys saying, well, you know, they only do this to the foreigners. They don't do these to the Filipinos. No, it happens to Filipinos also. Good example is Rafi Tofo because you see it happening there also. You see it happening to local men that there's some women in a you know yeah it's probably going to be lesser money that they lost but you know just just understanding that this exists all over the world you know finding the right person is difficult whether you're in your country or you're international and so it's just a lot of these guys don't know how to choose women yeah right and, so and you right, choose yeah. yeah you choose to go against the red flags you know i've you can even say I chose a wrong woman here or there in the past because, you know, they're only, you know, technically all women will have red flags. All men would have red, will have red flags. Okay. The question is, which red flag are you able to handle? Which red flags are you able to say, okay, let me ask better questions so we can solve certain things. But let's just be honest. It's that. The basic red flags are where a lot of guys kind of don't pay attention. And that's the problem that exists. I'm not saying all poor people are bad people. I'm just saying is pay more attention. Right. Yeah. And also, guys, again, um, first off, be aware that red flags are kind of okay depending on what you want. And what I, what I mean by this, okay. Okay. Remember yeah. what I said? There's girlfriend material, there's wife material. Now, in at our later years that we are right now, we're, we're past the girlfriend stage. But what I'm saying, when you're younger, you have to again set a boundary of this ima imaginary line. Okay, this is going to be a girlfriend. Period. The end. It'll never going to go past this. I've had several girlfriends that I've had just in that existed. In this realm, no intentions of ever going beyond that. No intentions of them moving in with me. No intention of them. Point is, they're just girlfriends. Because, again, I know when it comes to a real relationship, they become toxic. Now, at our later years, be aware. Can you still do this? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's up to you. But to make matters worse, you do have expats here that say, hey, go to Tondo. Get a girl there. Hey, go to Samar. Get a girl there. Hey, go to Mindanao. Go to this little area. Get a girl there. That's the problem we face nowadays in this YouTube era that you have actual expats that mislead other expats. And mm -hmm. it's not exactly misleading because you have to remember in their Someone own in their with. own world, this is okay. If that makes any sense. To them it's okay. But to most people, they're like, uh-uh, that's not a good idea. Uh-uh, you should You mean do like this. approach them at the Angelus Market at Pong Pong and say, hey, can I buy those eggs for you, babe? Well, yeah, well, what I'm saying is there's a lot of expat vloggers here, again, that mislead people. But you have to remember, in their own minds, they're not misleading anybody. They're just telling other people the way they do it, which worked for them, not necessarily healthy but that's what they do so i'm not accusing anybody of saying oh they're lying no they're not lying they're just this is the way they do things and i yeah. agree with that method but yeah go ahead mike yeah, i completely agree i mean what's more likely that these are the red even though there's those red flags these are red flags they're willing to forego right right but then at the very same time is if you then go ahead and look at the type of women that these guys end up with far majority of these vloggers end up breaking with you know breaking up with these women like you know you, you see so let's say for example right um I mean, Gio. 
wasn't yeah. going to go there, but he wanted to use them. I already predicted when that marriage was going to end. I was trying not to use a name, okay? <laughs> so, so, okay. I am. I ain't worried about running into Geo. So, let, okay, fine. Let's let's use Geo for a perfect example. How long do you think they'll be married? I'm not. I'm not even. Well, let's not talk about his wife. I'm not going to even talk about his wife right now. You know, she didn't oh, wink I, at I me. I was talking about the marriage back in the U.S. She she did wink at me once. So, all right. Um, look at Geo's ex. Right. Um, okay. I forgot her name already. Um, anyways, but look at his his ex girlfriend. Every guy was saying, "I need to get me a girl like her." So now let me pay attention. To what Geo is saying. So every advice that Geo was giving on how he got the girl, all this, what to do for the girl. So guys are believing all of that, right? Player. Well, then their relationship ended. And there were stories about it. And even the girl shared her thoughts like six, seven months later on in her channel and her lives and stuff like that. And you start listening to that. Then you start saying, okay. So does that mean that anything that Geo suggested until that relationship ended is false, is wrong? Did a lot of that, a lot of guys got misled by that? Highly potential, yes. So that's the problem right there. So like that's why you need to put a basic red flag list that should be out there. And I'm not saying it's a hundred percent right. I'm just saying it's it's definitely guaranteed to decrease the percentile of you know failures right because that's the thing is if, if as, as guys our goal is to you know have you know you're already traveling thousands of miles you definitely want to decrease your um your your failures but what happens is a lot of guys who then feel that they don't have a lot of choices out there when they come to the Philippines, they don't want to create that filter of those red flags because it then minimizes the amount of girls that they can put them, themselves in front of. I mean, so it's like, you know, there, I was watching a video uh, reaction yesterday, or was it today, um, of a tribe of men, okay? Oh, and yeah, so I so I, I, I've spoken to him a couple times, and I, I, I was telling him, I was like, you know, you need to know more about the Philippines sometimes. But he was, he was doing a reaction, and perfect example is you see a lot of guys are complaining now that there's too much competition. There's, uh, you know, women are not approaching me as much no more. Women are not doing this and this and so like it used to be. Pay attention to when a lot of these Filipinos were truly giving men attention a lot online. Right. It was during the pandemic. Yes. People Correct. were hungry. <laughs> People were trying to find solutions for their stuff. There's so a no lot way. of guys who got a lot of attention during that time is now coming to the Philippines and realizing it's not the truth. Right. Like right. I, I just um uh, I just uh did a video capture earlier on today, right? I'm planning to do a video about you know online dating. I'm laughing my butt off. Because there's guys watching this this ads from Filipina Cupid, okay? It's an ad from Filipina Cupid of why you should find a Filipina this and that. And guys are probably like, oh, my God, I need to find a Filipina like her, this and that. And I'm laughing because I'm like, that's Kazumi, a porn star. Being oh, they used. Use, they use a porn star? They're using Kazumi as their spokesmodel right now. Wait. Oh, snap. So, wait. She's Japanese, right? No, Kazumi's Filipina. Oh, okay. Wrong yeah. Kazumi. George is out of that game right now. Yeah. It's forbidden. Yeah, I, this sorry. I was, I was, I was yeah, laughing sorry. my butt off because I messaged her. You know, I messaged her yesterday. I was like, yo, I saw your advertising and stuff like that because uh, a friend of mine who I used to date was her, um, was her makeup artist. So I'm like, I messaged her and I'm just like, yo, what's up with this? And she's like, yeah, they paid me good. I was like, all right, cool. I was like, I'm making a video. You, you should stop by and watch it. Because this is the funny part is just that why are we, of all people to use for your advertising is a prawn star. Who, you know, so I'm just like laughing my butt off. And just like, you know, you go to Christian Filipina, who's their spokesmodel at one given point was a woman that says, 
her mom's like open your wallets and it's a culture for foreigners when you come to the philippines to pay uh to send uh the whole neighborhood to uh um to um what do you call this thing um for vacation pretty much and i'm just like laughing my butt off on how a lot of these these people are watching this and not paying attention to the truth like Okay, you know how many guys probably got convinced to sign up for Filipino Cupid because of Kazumi? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, I'm yeah. just saying. Everybody's a sucker for a pretty face, sadly. I use it for all my rich girlfriends back at home to get a, a somebody like George. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just facts says not Debbie does <laughs> Duma. <laughs> Debbie does Duma. There you go. Yo, Debbie Does Dallas was my first, baby. <laughs> That's a classic. No, everybody knows Debbie Does Dallas. If you don't know that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Does Dallas. That's like that's like the um good analogy would be like if you don't know Porky's, then I don't know. <laughs> Those are classics. I swear that cowboy's uniform did me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Right, it's like go cowboys. That's the only time right. I said go cowboys. Hey, hey. what? Oh, I, and I'm not well. I knew a um a a cowboys cheerleader once. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Tell you, please do tell Joy. She had this. She had the. Um, I didn't know that's what she was. She, um, the only reason why I know is because she had a a cowboy hat filled with rhinestones and i was like wait a minute <laughs> and then i looked her up and I'm like oh crap you know one of those things but you know oh. debbie does dallas that's yeah, but i mean it's like we're, we're gonna see more and more of these you know no, that's no, why i'm just like I'm, I'm laughing my butt off you know because it, it, people say you're laughing on somebody's pain it's funny most people most comedic things is about pain like people don't understand comedy mm -hmm. is based on pain sure is Most there's no such pain. thing as a, a as a you know like anything that's comedic there's always someone that's that's receiving the pain and we're laughing off of that just so for people to say that oh that's so mean to and i'm like stop stop with that woke stuff right you know right you mean woke like our puppy here in pajamas? Now you know I wasn't gonna comment on that, but you know, oh, just really, it's hot. Why you guys? Why do you have him in the pajamas? It, it well because Mike, the puppy. It's is cold. actually cold over here. It, this Mike, is, we like to report this is the weather. Huh? Um, it's a hospital cold in here. I, I call, the animals sit there and right. shake. Yeah. I call <laughs> Heidi. Okay, my nickname for Heidi is Bubbly Bear, but for the most part, I call her Polar Bear. It's, mm -hmm. it's cold, man. It's freezing. No lie. Yeah. Plus, it's Easter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I should do a live just to do the babasa. <laughs> oh, yes. actually, I thought about it. <laughs> it no, because like we read it, like we don't sing it, like in the Philippines. You know how? Because like I, when I was young, my dad would like have a tent built. You know, right. in the in the you know in the in because we had this free open land next door, he would have a tent pull up there. That there's these big calderos that will come in because they'll start making like um, you know, all the different desserts and pancit and stuff like that. And people would just like take turns for like 24 hours. Yes, so and so just wow. singing it, and I'm like, how can you sing it? Like you know, so it's like, and I, I used to remember it used to be like you know read you know so in the states you know we would read it and it would take us like about. It would take like about, I'll say, 10, 11 hours straight of just reading the whole book. And it's really hard because when I was younger, my tongue was, you know, was Bisaya. So having to say it in Tagalog, I just, it, you just don't, you just don't understand most of it because it's like real Tagalog. Right. Like it's true, true Tagalog. Right. There's nothing right. in there. Correct. True it's Tagalog, right? It's yeah. For those of you again who don't understand what that means, it's kind of like Latin on the body. No, it's more like old English. Like if you guys read the Constitution, it's written in English, but it's an old English. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's not the same. Um, same thing. A lot of people like 
Well, Tagalog's a lot like Spanish. Yes and no, not the real Tagalog. It's Filipino. This is the, the 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 one that you're familiar with is Tagpanglish, as I call it. It's a mixture of Tagalog, um, Tagalog, English, and Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, t- Tagalog is pre-colonial. Right. Filipino started pretty much post-Spanish. And so, you know, the, the Spanish people did not, it, it, so it, when people, when Spain would like, you know, take over Portugal, whatever, they would make the people start speaking their language. Doesn't happen on how it is with the Filipinos. Spain allowed them to use their own language because then at the same time as they were able to differentiate people who have higher class because the ones who have higher class is able to speak Spanish. So you know that's that's how one way they can tell the differences so it's right. like that's a big difference filipino has the mixtures of you know any outside influence within the language so spanish you know um english and all those kind of stuff mm-hmm. right yeah and that's why i've been telling people again just just so you know again the spanish is like Mike says, it's after the Philippines got colonized and true Tagalog again. Um, you, even I have a hard time understanding it. I'm like, what? What did you say? Because I, I know when I talk to older people, um, that's when I have a hard time speaking because it's like, I don't understand wow. these these words. Yeah, Ruby, Ruby further down said it's even hard reading the Pavasa and Kapampongan. She oh, says, come on, Bob. And where there's the another... writing is in Q and C, correct? Not Q, K. yeah, there's no K in come on, for the most part. Although come on, spelled with a K, K. Yeah. everywhere yeah. It says for the most K. part. I said for the most part, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, Q, yeah, no, come on, it's a different story entirely, too. And again, true come on, I actually, I believe come on, it's harder, the true come on, it's harder to understand than old tagalog and i'm not yeah again it, it's i'm yeah, not I, I would say so here. Yeah, yeah yeah i would say so yeah because again it's i'm not being partial to my language it's just the way it is you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah um even i say a lot a lot i have been known to talk to kompangans i say just so you know i'm a little rusty i'm a kompangan what does that mean you know what i'm saying <laughs> And, it, and it's not just me. And then they they all look at each other like, yeah, what does that mean? And then they, yeah, they all start talking to each other. And they're like, I would not dare bother. I see I made a valid question here. Yeah, I asked George all the time. I said, what is that in Kevin Pong again? He says, let me think about it. I said, do you know the language or not? Dude? And he's like, no, you got to well, understand. Another one that's hard is Biko. My dad speaks Biko. My dad spoke oh, Biko, Spanish, Tagalog. Yeah. My dad spoke Biko, Spanish, Tagalog, Bisaya. Um, Chavacano. My might have spoke a lot of different languages. Well, babe, we probably should wrap this up because we are expecting deliveries and yeah, I yeah. So one heck of a show today for show. So, Mike, thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for being with us. Later, guys. Check out Mike's Philippine journey, and uh. He's got some okay stuff. You know? <laughs> no, no. Um, mm-hmm. when it comes, I'm always, to I'm always dating, open for more people to hate on me. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. If if you want to know again the ins and outs as far as um dating in the Philippines, he's he's more attuned into that. And again, he can break it down in analysis. Um, dating. He's just gonna break anything down. He's yes, break, correct. Break, That's break correct. Break it down. Philippine. Break it down, yo. Break it down. Break yeah. it down. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Okay. Chat right, later. You. Peace. Thanks, Mike. Ciao. All right, guys, thanks for dropping in today. Ruby, thank you. And for our actual members, guys, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to do a thumbs up or thumbs down on this. Uh, looks like we had a few people in there today. Sarah was in the house. We had Ted in the house. Uh, of course, we have Mike in the house. Mike and Mike, music promotion. And us loving the Philippines, Basil Moy, Philippine Expat, Johnson, Just Fast, Travel Trends, DJ Course, RGD, Mike Ross, Woody Light, Manny C, AJ. Yeah, Ted was with us today, yeah. Yeah, Tony Manning, Manny C was with us. 
Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you so much. Um, again. The HX Bat Prepper was in the house. Thank you so much, Ruby, for being here. And everybody that actually joined. And we will see you guys later. Next one will be, I guess, Thursday for us, Wednesday for those in the U.S. Try to get some footage. We're supposed to go out and about here. So, and puppy. Easter bunny, <laughs> the Easter bunny says good night. All right. Yeah, that's right. Tim Huss, Buck, Buckeye, Tim Huss is here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, Love you. Tim. All right. Bye. Bye. Tim. Bye.